What is up, people? Hey. Uh, I have a shitload of classical records to show today. Hey, Nicole. That's hilarious. Hey, I have a story to tell. Okay. So I went out today, and I went. There's a record store that I don't like. It's it's a very shitty quality record, shitty store. Mm-hmm. The guy does whatnots and whatnots off shitty records. And and um, Jim went there yesterday to try and get the guy to advertise. So I went in there and looked through. His records were overpriced and not in great shape. But right in the middle, there was an un, unpriced record, not in the sleeve. It was a really, really nice copy, OG something else. Oh, wow. it out, New York label, looked pretty good, had dust on it. And then it wasn't priced. So I went up to the guy, said, this isn't priced. He goes, okay. And I didn't fight him on it. I should have said, hey, I'll give you this. And he went back in the back and put 220 bucks on it, which yeah. is probably around maybe what it goes for. Yeah. But I mean, it was he wouldn't have known. You know, that's how sloppy the store is. That's when you got to put it in the middle of a bunch of other shit. I mean, I could have been a, I'm not the, I'm, you know, I put out good karma into the thing. Yeah. But I could have said to him, no, give it to me for 150 which he probably wouldn't have. Well, then how is that bad karma? It just, I, you know the look I saw on his face? Yeah. You know how people just have a stupid look on their face and they can't do anything about it? Yeah. Don't say me. But um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so very familiar. <laughs> but the, that's how the guy looked, and as I yeah. handed him the record, the stupid f- face got stupider. And then even when he priced it and handed it back <clears> to <throat> me, it was even more stupid. And when mm. I said I'm not paying for it, he was more stupid on his face. Mm. Oh, can we do something that we started on um, my stream the other night? I don't know. Sure. What's up, AZ Mick? It this is the segment's called Get to Know AZ Mick. Yeah, we right. know that his favorite sandwich is ham and cheese, Swiss. That's I true. think ham, ham and Swiss with, I mustard. Think, with mustard on white bread. Your favorite beverage of choice, Az Mick. Let us know. Favorite beverage, please. Yes. <laughs> hey, Mark. Is that the store that that charges for all you can carry out? No. No, this the thing. I'll tell you the name of it if you care. It's. I mean, it just. There's no pride. There's no pride in the store at all. Yeah, it's a sad store. Come on, Mm. AZ Mick, beverage choice. What is your favorite beverage? How did the uh, classical stream go, Mike? It was cool. We had um, Michael from Noted Noted and Archived on YouTube and Balmoray. He's a DG artist, Mm. and he uh, he was in the gallery, and he's friends with a few people that were on the panel. So he came up and we spoke about oh fresca. Fresca. <laughs> I, I am a fan of fresca. But we have uh, something that, common, AZ Mick. That was a major highlight. So I encourage people to go check that out because he talks about working um with Deutsch Gramophone, the support they give him, the recording process of how this new record came out. And it's great, you know, great insight. That's very cool. Uh, you know what came out of the stream last night is <laughs> Michael Muller reached out to me and we exchanged information. So hopefully we'll meet up and have some coffee and stuff. Are you on a date or something? Well, he lives in LA. Nice. Usually what happens is I meet these people in LA and after hanging out with them a few times, they move away. Hmm. We got a Loki. Yeah, I thought Fresco was out of print too. Paul. Nope. Nope. Still available. It technically is grapefruit, grapefruit diet soda, but it, right. I don't think it tastes that much like grapefruit. Rob, so what, is know, your, uh, what is your beverage of choice? Coffee, obviously. Are you mentally insane? What do I? Well, do? I mean, if you're gonna have, you're not gonna have that with a meal, are you? That is his well, meal. Here's the deal. I kind of given up soda, so either I drink iced coffee, water, and I do do the diet powder, iced teas, and other things. Okay. So, iced coffee is where it's at. Hmm. Rob, uh, Paul's going to San Diego. Where should he go? Okay, there's. I'll, I'll reach out to you privately. There's only one place, but San Diego is a pretty pathetic um, city for record shopping. It really, really is. I mean, compared to uh, Jim and I went down there to go for him to visit stores and stuff, 
and it just really was sad. Mm -hmm. There is one passable store. Then there's a hi-fi store that sells records. Mm -hmm. And Paul, you should be like a kid in a candy store. Most of the records are new, but there's a audio. What's the audio? They had a, some audio quest. They oh, have cool. um, Venus. They have a lot of Venus jazz titles. So you could definitely spend some an hour, a couple hours there. The amount of records they have. Prices are not crazy horrible but they're a little pricey they have a lot of um music they have a bunch of music matters and stuff but they mm. price them up high like so, higher, but it's higher, than, higher than higher than like, discounts or just normal are we talking like 300 a over, title? over 150 maybe a more it could be a deal depending on what it is well mm -hmm. some were ones that were kind of available on oh uh, yeah there they did have whistle stop I remember that. Or Undercurrent. That's one record I want. They had a copy of Undercurrent. But it was isn't that, one, isn't that one coming out in the classic series this year? I thought we knew that already. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, All I'll say know. is, uh, how long are you going to be there, Paul? Might as well just drive up to L.A. <laughs> That's true. Better record shop in here. How long's that drive, Rob? It depends on traffic. I mean, 90 minutes to two and a half hours, depending. Depends. Hey, Louie. I think we're about to run out of releases, right? Like for the Classic Series, there should be an announcement very soon. I think Because I think we're about out of runway there. I mean, I'll probably pick up Happenings because I have a, a, a Black B copy that's VG-ish. Yeah. The one title I want is... What is it? Sorry, I'm looking at the Music Matters page right now. I'm going to bring this up here in a second. We can look at what's left in the Classic Series. Folk, yeah, folk art is okay, but it's still not... You would think there'd be a store there. It's not L.A., and it's a big city. Oh, Bird in Hand. I hope the Classic does Bird in Hand. It's Donald Bird with Charlie Ross Pepper Adams. Mm. And the first track is... What the hell is it? It's um. They don't give you any of the details on Music Matters. I forgot what the first track is, but it's it's a standard that I really like. I just can't remember. Worst website ever. Um, Paul Vegas is better than San Diego, but not much more. Although it wasn't. There's that one star with the another record Nazi, that I hear he's worse than the guy in L.A. Yeah. Witchcraft. Thanks, Obsolete Media. Yeah, it's a great version of Witchcraft. So the music matters is still in stock, but it's like 150 bucks, and I just don't want to do it. It's it's a lot. I'll send you the name of that one store in Paul in uh, San Diego. You should be fine going there. I think. Here, check this out. Oh, I hit cancel. Damn it! So there's only four left for the classic series that we know about here. Oh, you're not sharing, Chris. I oh, know. I got it. Thank you. So yeah, Miles Davis Volume Two. Which you know we all know what that is. Uh, it's the worst. The worst. Which I I, I have a two. Better. I have a two for with volume one and volume two. It sounds excellent. So that two that two for is the way to go. That was terrible. What? I, I know you're horrible at this. You know. <laughs> How long do we have to stare at this until our eyes go blurry? Um, you're a little blurry. Oh, by the way. Yeah. I think I fixed my internet. Okay. So I hooked up a. I was using the device which has a built-in router. Mm -hmm. I hooked up an external router, dedicated just to my computer. So I think that has improved the quality of me. Yeah. Um, Rob, do you have a copy of Bird in Hand on Blue Note? No, I do not. I don't know if I've ever saw it. Uh, so it, it oh, is... I, oh, there's only three. A perspective, what is that? A perspective, whatever. That one you see a lot. That one, I, you, I've seen uh, Japanese copies of that. I have not seen an OG or even a, a 70s. Yeah. Copy. It's 1959. Let's see. <clears throat> Let's see what copies are available. So in the United States, sort by price. 
let's look at VG plus. And there's some near mint ones too. Oh, these are CDs. This is probably DMM. Yeah. Well, anyway, I'd like them to reissue this. It's a great album. It's just killer hard. It came out as Music Matters. Yeah, it is available. I think 150 bucks on Music Matters right now. So, yeah. I listened to this two nights ago. I was totally vibing out to it. So great. Yeah. I have a mint copy uh, 2i of that that I need to sell because this, I, have the, I have the MoFi. So. This is the first, it was, I think it was pressed the first year, but it's the second label. What is it? It's got terrible. Oh, What's that? Oh, I was yeah. muted and I'm just lost. Yeah, thank you, AJ. So, Rob, so do you have any records to show? Did you pick up anything tonight? Yeah, I picked up stuff today and um, really exist. Hmm. picked up a few more for the auction tomorrow. So, I know this, Loki. That's on Prestige, right? Sounds made up. I doubt you guys have heard of it. Why would you doubt that? I bet it doesn't exist. I think they put it out on, I think OJC put it out as like a, one of the special OJCs. Um, but yeah, and I think, isn't like, isn't Phil Woods on that? Isn't there like a bunch of horns on that one? Let's take a look. Yeah. Birds of a feather. I hope I'm right. I could be wrong. I think it's made up. No, oh, there's something on Prestige that's like that. That's well, Dave Bryant. He's playing you. Yeah, he's full of shit. No. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. You're going to have to change Hold your on. Name there's a prestige. Hold on. No, yeah. hold on. It's more like classical album only. Hold on. Loki's trap. Yeah, can you make up a classical album that sounds real too, Loki, please? No. I'm going to make you find this. Fire, Loki. Oh. Hold on. Now I got to find this. You're not going to find it. I am. Oh. Come on, everyone. <laughs> everyone birds of a feather. Uh, uh, says it'll be awkward if this actually exists. Is it, is it... This it's called hey. bird feathers. Thank That's you very much. Thing. On prestige, hey. we're looking it up. It's on you, new. Job. Hey Loki, in addition to a fake classical album, can you make up a holiday character for kids and tell my listen? All listen, all you fools. Like this Easter is what Bunny. I thought he was referring to. It's called it's like bird a Donald feathers. Bird record. And that's what I thought he. I, I um, thought that's what this was. This uh, is the Japanese pressing. That is a cool though. Who's on this? It is cool, and it is kind of hey, rare. So that's why I thought he was you, have, Hey, Mike, have you heard of Arbor Day Arnold? He's a leopard. It comes out for kids. <laughs> well, anyway. Brandon is on a break for now. Self-imposed break. So we don't know. Um. So I went the re one record store I go to. It seems like some jet reviewer. Sells back his new records, so I picked up a copy of this reissue nice. for like twenty bucks. Yeah, and I will have to say, um, out of the this, um, what do you want? Was it, is it the Verb series? No, it's um. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. So this is one of the better sounding records from that. You know, I that Roy Haynes is one of the worst sounding ones, with a. Um, but this one sounds really good. It really okay. does. I don't know. Music wise, it's okay. It's good. I liked it. But, but it sounds really nice. Yeah. Um, not very mingusy. That's probably what the issue is. Um well, it's pre bird, man. Well, I don't know. What do you want from this? I picked this up. This is a superior viaduct reissue from uh, 2015. And it sounds really nice. I like the Superior Fire Duct. They, you know, this isn't like a, um, you know, those high high end covers, but it's a really good. These older Superior Fire Duct covers are really nice, nice and thick and hard. Whoa, plastic. But this is good. I was listening to a little bit of this. I want to get sold though. I don't have it yet. What? A bird so, in the bush. Hey, I picked this up. I have to clean it. It came for some reason. I got this was like in a free bin, the scary Bart's record. And there were two copies of it inside. It's a one LP record, but hmm. I'll I'll clean and see which one's the better sounding. Send that one to me. 
I'll give you the shittier one. Right. Um, this this is uh, I got this. Oh yeah, I, have, oh, nice. I have the two for with this in it, but this sounds <laughs> really good. Yeah, that's uh, great. I recommend this is a pickup. You know, all Book Irvin's a pickup. <laughs> And then I haven't listened to this yet. I got this, but it had a seam split in it. Oh. Send it back. No, they're sending me another copy. So do you get to um, keep them? I'll do something. And then I got an OG mono of this. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. Wait, can you talk? This, this is a prizing doesn't go for a lot of money. I have an OJC of this. Is it worth twelve thousand dollars? I can you do a little motion with your hand and say know. that is worth twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> Thank you. You've blessed it. Well, hold on. Who so tell us about that record? Who's on it with them? Or is it solo? No. Oscar Pettiford and now Art Blakey. Boom. It's a great cool. record. What year did what, that come out? Is yeah, what year what year was it recorded? I think it might be fifty seven. Yeah, it seems early. So but surprisingly it doesn't go for a lot of money. I don't know why. Cover. It's an awesome cover. Yeah. Um, I sold you a Japanese copy, John. That's played really nicely. There is one more. This is the best pickup of the pick this up today. This is awesome. If you this is a Japanese. If you can get this, kick ass. One side is the trio with him and um uh Buell Neilander and Rudy Collins. And then the second side at Bill Barron on sax and Ted Kirsten on trumpet. But it's it's I guess one of his first albums and but it's still kind of edgy avant-garde, but not crazy. That's on this. That's on that? Yeah. So this has well, his trans transition huh? title and then his United Artists title, which is that. Cool. Well, I have that too for already. Yep. Do a shootout. This, this is really good. Finals, nice and quiet. Yeah. It's really good. Do a shootout. Hey, Dave. This is really good. Oh, Dave, you have to. Uh, yeah. Balls. Over your YouTube. Hey, Dave. Balls. Hold on. You got to shut off your YouTube. Do, 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 do. Stream the Jackie McLean action. It's the first check in the um, I have a, co I have a copy of this in the auction, and then I cleaned my other copy, and this is excellent record. Balls. This is an excellent copy. If you have, yeah. it's not an expensive record. If anyone sees it, grab it. No, I haven't seen that version. I have that though. That's good. I mean, I, I don't that. think these uh, horizons typically sound that great, but this is, it's kind of quiet. Think this sounds good, man. Because he does a, it's him doing a duet with each one of these people. Is yeah. that different than the other one? What's the other one? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. You okay yeah. now, Mike? Uh, I think you sound, yeah, I think you sound all right. Okay. Balls. Yeah, I think the, I had the balls. I can't hear that. Yeah. Sorry. yeah. Balls. Hey, Louis. Balls of hey. Fire. Here, this. Mike is dethroning Rob as the two fur king. This is a different. I'm kind yeah. of selling off my. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the different same. People. That's the different people. Different oh, people. Right. It's like a part. That's when he went through his Billy Jean King phase. Yeah, this is really good though. It's on Horizon. Sounds good. That, those are also duets, Chris, or are they playing? Yeah, both Tim, they're gonna do it with Don, one with Don Cherry, one with Ornette, yeah. Hampton Halls, and Archie Shed. Oh, cool! I'd like to get both of those. Yeah, they're really good. What's up, Louie? Yeah, I have both of those. What's up, Chris? Mm. I'm trying to talk myself out of spending three hundred dollars. Um, Why spend records instead? Is it for life saving emergency? Are you? Well, are you? It's, it's as important as a life saving emergency. It's a fuzz pedal. I'm trying to have that. Feel like I can't live without. You need to get this pedal. This is the pedal you need. Dude, this is from Third Man. It's uh, one of Jack White's pedals. Oh. It's called the Plasma Coil, and it's it's. I have to have it. It's from Thurman, I'll probably be warped and sound like shit. Uh, yeah. In the mirror. Yeah, they just give it a fancy name and it's just a bunch it's, of no, it's art. it's awesome. It's awesome and I have to have it. But I hold on. Well, How much is it here? That's it, and it's friggin' awesome. Yes. That's not a bad price. Oh my god, it's so cool. Pedals are these days. 
Hold on, why can't I? You should so look at I, like play a sound demo of it. Like there's yeah, countless yeah. videos of sound people demoing it and stuff. Like on YouTube, if you just put pl a third man mm -hmm. plasma coil, it'll a million will come up. I just, I'm losing my. Oh, mind. I, I don't know how to play YouTube over this with with the noise. So. Uh, no worries. I'm sure uh, I'm just I quite noise. touch each one of them in a anointed a fuzz pedal. It uses 3,500 volts to yeah. help. It's I I don't know how to describe it yet, but what are it's, the all, it's all ball bearings, Louis. Are yeah. people so are people super excited about this? Is this the first no? It's, time it's a couple years movie? old. It's a couple oh. years old. The reason I'm excited about it is because I didn't know about it, but I'm also a connoisseur of fuzz. Okay. Well, yeah. I have some in my belly button. I'll send it to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So is it a they're reissuing this pedal or no? It's still um. It's just there's still some still, available. They're still making them. Yeah. Oh, Sweet okay. Sweetwater has seven of them. I'm just like. I use them. I you know it's like anything else. It's like records or whatever. I although I will use it on the record I'm making right now, and it's like the most unique fuzz I've ever come across, and that is saying something. Well, then you only have to sell like twenty records to pay for it, huh? I want to keep my records though. No, I'm talking about copies of your record when they come out. Oh yeah. 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 I'm counting on you for one. Rob, where, where'd you get that stack of records there? You just showed all over the place. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I typically in a day, we'll try and go to like three different places. Okay. I, just I, almost, had, I almost had an OG copy of something else, but. Oh, how much it was, it was that? unpriced in the middle of the store and they priced it too high for me to walk out with it. Uh, how, how much was it? 220 bucks. I mean, I mean, I have I'm kind of like it'd be nice to have an OG copy, but I have the classic and I'm kind of a it sounds good. I'm fine with that. I have a weird, weird copy of that with a with a different cover, awful cover. Yeah, That's I've cool. I've demoed or like I've played a bunch of Earthquaker devices fuzz or like related pedals, um, but I've got some really boutique ones, and even the weird ones that I have, this plasma coil is unique to those. It's it's a sound I've been actually looking for for a really long time. Hey, Mark H, what do you think sounds better? One of my favorite people is here. Yeah, I, I have a big mouth. A per, until you, here's my issue with music. Hmm. You're 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 um, playing into this nonsense. Just go back to the old baggie. Hey, I don't understand. Musette is fine. Leave, leave Musette alone. Mm, uh, go back to baggie, man. <clears throat> I wish I had a camera I could move around. So I can show you all the crap that I have. You can't move it around? Uh, no, well, I mean, not over there, you know? Yeah. I do have another camera. I just don't know what will happen if I plug it in. The world might yeah, end. It'll probably you know? come on. Yeah, it might. Let's see. I want to get another camera. StreamYard sucks for this kind of stuff, though, you know? No, it doesn't. Why are you like? Are you like getting paid or something, man? Actually, yes. <laughs> Streamyard sucks. Does it? It's like the it's the like a Twitch streamer would never use such a thing. Except no, for this Chris. Use you know what That's I mean? Fair. I don't use it for Twitch. Okay, here. Let's see what happens. They use OBS for that shit. I wonder if I can change my own cameras. So what? What are you doing? I just plugged in another Damn camera. Damn it, Rob! Look what you've done. Good riddance. Edit audio. See, I can't change my. Well, maybe that's true. You can change your. You just have to know how to use a computer. Um, right? You just like cats, Delphi, you know? Yeah, me too. Let's see what happens. Is this the one? Ooh, that's a different angle. Well, I'm sorry, I've ruined your night. Low ah, there we go. It looks like shit, though. Oh, I'm about to throw up. It's got to focus. Yeah, it's got to focus. focus. Damn you. Hold on, let me clean it. Make sure it's not. It's fish eye. This thing sucks. Yeah. All right, I'm not drunk enough. Right, are we, is this like you getting a proctology exam with the camera? <laughs> it's like it's Mike's camera. Yeah, this is Mike's new camera. 
<laughs> well, it's fuzzy. Oh, so. Yeah, it's fuzzy. Move it further fuzzy. away. It might be too close. No. You yeah. have it in the going Zero. through a fuzz pedal? Uh, I go see the optometrist, Louie. Right, right, yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. go. It's looking better. Whoa, Ooh. what is Whoa. that? Whoa. Whoa. That's my the rack that's sitting right next to me. So this is what I see. That's not the kind of rack okay. I like. Yeah, this Hello. is what. Oh my Holy crap. crap. Some of my it's crap. Serious business here. Yeah, so I got some good analog stuff you guys probably have heard on records before. Like two SSL. Too many dials. Nice Camden. A couple of warm audios and some Midas stuff. Then I built all these. These are all mic preamps too. And this is a compressor I built. And then they've got 1176, an LA-2A, and then an EQP-1A, patch bay. All kinds of fun shit. Here's one of the amps or one of the cabinets I built for my dual rectifier. And then here, how much slack do I have here? I wonder. Well, there's the pedal board. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, I got some more. Room. Okay. Yeah. So like this fuzz right here, if I can get close enough, this was made, this is a guy in LA just makes these. This is one of my favorites that I made this clon centaur. And, uh, this is a ridiculous fuzz. I wish I could get closer. Sorry. You not have any, you have, you have any Sove tech stuff, a big muff? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I do have a big muff. It's right here. Yeah, it's right it's, a, it's yeah. the big version of the big muff. Cause I had to have the, it. Not the muff I know. You've, already, you've already passed my test. Yeah. And then I've got this nebula, which is ridiculous as well. But then as for, as far as, uh, Sovtek stuff, I've got a Sovtek clone tube amplifier, um, here. God bless you, sir. And then there's. My guitars. My number one is this Jazz Master, and then this is a vintage Mexican Strat I've had since 1995. Oh, jazz Master is dope. And I got this Jazz, did jazz it come Bass. In yeah, it did. It's got active pickups in it too. It's a what Squire. Year? What, what year it's, is that? It's new. It's like a couple of years old. It's got okay. um, right. yeah. it's a Squire. It's got active pickups in it. It's like this guitar is like my sound. And then I've got this no, cat right here. Oh, nice oh. cat. That's Camir. He's hanging out, Gone. smoking weed. And there's records. Jeffrey's ah! asking, where, where are your Jazzmaster pickups? They are the proprietary Squire pickups. And I'm going to leave them in there. I was going to turn them into EMGs, right? I was going to swap them to EMGs. Active EMGs? Yeah, but I'm. they are active. But I'm not going to because those sound amazing. Yeah, why screw up a good thing, right? Let me see if I can switch back. And then, Louis, we have a request for for you to play a song. No, we don't. It'll Isn't take the, the screen down. Asking? Oh, if no, I had to, if have I'd... Louis play live. No, I don't want to do that. Louis, what's the name of your band? <laughs> That's a good question. I have a, I have a band that I have a name that I've been using for a long time, but other people have used it. Let me switch my camera back. Hold on. Um. Uh, da, da, da. I'm glad this worked. This was cool. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, Rob next with his room tour. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Rob's, Rob's <laughs> let, let me sure. let me put my other camera on. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I have a a a name for my band, but it's be it's not completely unique. Nobody's like nobody big is using it, and so that so that alone your, makes me not want to use it, right? But um. Is your name the is, is your name the Jazz Bums? Yeah. You know what the name is because I sent I it to you. Um, but like, I actually I, don't. I don't know which one's the title and which one's so right. It, it, yeah. So I actually wasn't totally clear on that. I don't think. So anyway, like I I don't know if I should change it or not. Like I used to love thinking up dumb band names. Like I think everybody probably does, but now I hate it because it's like now it's got to be serious and it's I mean not in tone, but it's whatever I pick, it's gonna stick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, what? the name of my band with my my drummer Joe, it's just a two piece, is Married Man Band, all one word, because we had a stretch when we lived together where we had like five friends in a row all get divorced in the same year, and each one of them lived on our couch for a spell, so we decided yeah. we were going to be Married Man Band. So that's 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 how that happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, there's it was a, a bad group. run. Whatever year that was, I can't remember the exact that year. Sounds like a bad. Everybody got divorced that year. Everybody. Yeah. But yeah, so I don't know, man. Like that's like in the back of my mind. Like I have something. I don't want to reveal what it is. Just you know, 
for the sake of having some sort of momentum to bring everything out at once. But if well, you like it, I would, I would just keep it. Whatever your gut's telling you, I would just go with that. Well, well, yeah, man. But somebody else thought of it before, and even oh. though, even though it's not like somebody else's like successful band name yeah. or something, that alone gives me like pause because I don't know. UK on the end of it, like copyrighted from the UK. You can't hey, copyright uh, a band name. Pick up, pull up that website, the uh, band name generator. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, this is kind of a big deal to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I want to not, you know. What about, know. so in the kind of genre that you're in, does anybody just use their name? Like, could you just use like. I hate Louis, my name. Louis and, but is there like a. Uh, uh, an like anagram of my name or something no i don't know man well there's another guy in the band with me so i'm gonna i'm gonna help he's gonna help me figure it out louis mm -hmm. i'm in the giving mood so i'll just give you my band's name uh burns when i pee mm. but think that'll work for you yeah. yeah sometimes you can get help for that sometimes you can't that's the album title yes. it's called alpha zosin it's the name of the drug yeah yeah I need to figure out like all kinds of shit. Like I need yeah. a good graphic designer and all that stuff. And what about, what about this one? I think I should take that band name, Rob. Yeah. The it's all, it's my, my, I'm giving my gift to the universe. Whoever takes it first. Can I use the last golf ball? Because my name is different tonight. What all about right. zero? What about zero calorie soda? There's a, there's a, Man, you're, you are very white, Mike. There's a really cool, uh, somebody got a tattoo of a Diet Coke can with uh, uh, hearts around it and shit. And it's just like. That should be our next question next week for AZ Mick. Do you have any tattoos? <sighs> Who doesn't? Do you have any, uh, Rob? Zero tattoos. I'm guessing if, Mike has none. If I come out to LA to <laughs> visit you, can we get a tattoo together? There's so much better things to do than just sit in a chair and get. I can't think of there. more than a few. Yeah, I got an arm. I got an arm of tat here. There's lots of things I need in the world, and I would like to give to the world. Me with a tattoo is not one of them. Yeah, fair enough. More power. I don't mind. It'll be. Fun. What if it's my treat, though? No, I don't mind people having. I have no issue with tattoos. Just, and I don't even have issues with. Whatever pain it is, I I am okay with needles. Yeah, it's not that it's just I'm not a tattoo person. Louis, you ever heard of Rodney Rains? Not a top of my head. No, I dude, I follow one tattoo. Like, well, my Instagram feed is full of kick-ass tattoos that I'll never fucking decide to afford. Look, but yeah, I only really Rodney. follow. I follow Jay Jory in Dallas, and she's just okay. So awesome, I can't believe it. And I almost pulled the trigger on getting. Yeah tattooed by her you have to wait a year which is a great sign yeah. rodney's yeah. got about a three-year waiting list yeah totally like that it, it, that's my number one piece of advice for anyone getting a tattoo if your tattoo artist does not have a wait list that's relatively significant do not let them tattoo you unless you know them and they're new and they're starting out and you're gonna potentially not get a great tattoo and you want to help them that's different but like that's the best way to know if your tattoo artist is good well how are we going to go to la and just get random tattoos then if we have to wait a year well, we're going to get bad ones. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Well, you, you want to see some jazz records? Hell I just yeah. came from the record store, sure. literally, when I say that. What do you got? Let's do it. Oh, wait, right, Dave. So. By the way, you showed this last night, and I have a copy of it, too. Oh, yeah. Fantastic yeah. record. Same. Yeah, same press. Yeah. Yeah, I have, a, I have another RSD release of that, too. With a, when did with they RSD it? Called. What's that? When did it come out for RC? Maybe it maybe it was just a regular reissue, but it's it's got the original cover, which is different than that. I don't even know what to make of this comment. There's well, you didn't I, have to highlight it. Yeah, yeah, that, that um Belgium humor doesn't translate oh. you know, when it goes across <laughs> the ocean. But I think a few weeks ago I mentioned that collection that came into repo that uh the guy in town Gene who sells to DJs. Well, I forgot to go through the dollar bins and sure enough, a bunch of that collection was in there. So you had your stuff like this. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And this is six. This is six. I original stereo. You got for a buck for a dollar. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was in the dollar bin. Um, 
Let's see what else was in the dollar bin. There were three I got in the dollar bin. This this one, which is uh, Thad Jones. Oh, one nice. more time on Pole Jazz from Poland. And oh, it's wow. uh, Mel Lewis. Yeah, right. big band. The drummer on this is sick. There are drum breaks on this. And so I started to think about it. I'm like, because I found some more European stuff. So this was, again, collection. He buys these records to sell to DJs. This has got drum breaks for days on it. That's Fantastic awesome. record. Original of that. And then um, this what was this one. This one has a horrible cover, horrible title, but I took a chance on it because it's on the Odeon label. Hmm. And it was a Sweden uh, record. Um, okay. Wickman. And this is badass. Uh, Bobo Stenson's on this, Red Mitchell, Kelly Danielson. Um, again, the drums on this is killer. Red, uh, is Red Mitchell playing bass? Yeah, hold on. He's playing kazoo. Well, sometimes he yeah. plays. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what he's playing on here. Oh, okay. but he's playing bass, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Red, Red's on bass. Cool. This is, I didn't think this was, I just took a chance, you know what I mean? This, this is great. Yeah, no, that uh, EMI Odeon jacket and label are really nice. Yeah, that stuff. Is, I mean, you don't see stuff like this normally in a dollar bin. You know I mean? like oh, yeah. Titles, and I, so I went back tonight, and they they keep they have thousands of records to put out, so they've been refilling the front end. So I found uh, Philip Catherine. Oh, nice. Um, have Nyram, um, so great Belgian guitarist, I believe, from Belgium. Um, but this has got uh, Charlie Mariano on soprano on it. Very cool. What yeah, level is that on? More the fusion vein, I think. Mm -hmm. But okay. it was cheap. It was probably six bucks. Cool. I'd, I'd buy that. Then we got another. They have, there was another one of the Thad Jones with Mel Lewis. This one is live at Jazz Jantar. Is and that also on the Polish on jazz label? On full jazz. Wow. Cool. This was, yeah. this was, I think, also like six bucks. Cool. And again, something I just never, I never see these records. No. Anyway. No, Did you look up the value, the value of, of these? No, I haven't had a chance. I don't think they're worth, I don't, I think they're probably the right, for, well, they're probably a little bit low prices yeah. compared to what they go for, but nothing crazy. And I did get this, I just picked this up. This is a soul record, though. A breast of soul. It's got some, you know, I probably shouldn't show that on the channel. Anyway, I can see it's I can Tina Turner stuff with oh, Fontaine really? and Tom Bass, who's been in our ensemble Chicago. Oh, nice. uh, Leroy Horn. This is, I don't know. It's a comp from Dallas, Texas. Hmm. Or what is? Yeah, Pompeii Records, Dallas, Texas. No, oh, neat. I've never it's, heard of that. Yeah. Almost like a black exploitation record, but I grabbed that because I'd never seen anything like it. So, for a buck, or was it just that uh, one? That one was probably like twelve. Okay, but that's nice. that's what I picked up. Cool. Nice. I like those Polish ones. Those are neat. <clears throat> yeah. Anything anything I see on Polish, you know, the Polish to ground you label, the Musa stuff, or the yeah. jazz. I don't care what it is. I'm gonna pick it up. Just, I only have the Comita. Uh, Astigmatic on it, record. but it's yeah, it's a great record. Belgian jazz legend, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's probably one of my favorite guitarists. Period. Yeah, he's awesome. I've got him on several records. Yeah, his record stream is just unbelievable. Well, we know Mac doesn't have anything new, or do you? Who me? Yeah, I, I do yeah. also later on, um, or well, I can go grab him now. You, here you guys have been showing in on Instagram some Karamasa Hino records. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I picked up a a bunch yeah. of one the other day. Yeah. That is killer. Killer. killer man. Yeah, and Chris, you showed one, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you have a lot that one of the live records, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll find it. I'll show it here in a second. Yeah. This one. I'll follow the show. Oh, I've what never found that. that. Yeah, well, well, this is a a later reissue, I think in the 80s, because mm -hmm. the original goes for a lot of money. Yeah. But this, this sounds killer. Yeah, tack jazz. Yeah. Yeah, this that's, is, that's one I've never cool. 
Yeah, I picked this up at a very mm. nice price. So, right. This is the one I've been listening to like a bunch. Yeah, that one, the live one. It's good. The I have it. It. It's good. The sounds not like Catalyst. the best thing ever, but you know, it's a good record. Yeah, Catalyst label, right? Yep. Yeah. Let me let me go. I was going to show you some other Hino records because it's one of my favorite trumpet players. He's, he's just a machine. He, is, he also just has like this Miles like I don't know sound like you know when he's playing with lots of space and stuff. It's really cool. All right. So uh, this one is more of a Miles Davis sound. See what to say? Chronology on the track. Yeah. There's a store in town that sells Japanese uh, press, and they have both those records. I. But they're going at a higher end, than I think. Yeah, this one, this one I got from Alex. Um, and we got uh, this one's really good, um, "Journey to Air." But this is free jazz. Cool. It's really intense. Um, completely, mm. complete opposite record to Hynology. Uh, this, this, this goes off the deep end and quickly. Mm. Um, not an easy. This is actually a, even a difficult listen for me. Journey to Air, but it well, is pass, that, pass on that one then. <laughs> pretty hard. That's a hard. That's a hard <laughs> Not on the top of my list. <laughs> you got the um, Ninja Vibrations. Yeah, I want that for sure. Um, cool. Who who else is on that with him? Uh, Pierre Favre on drums. Uh, Heinz Sauer, uh, tenor Peter Warren bass. Cool. Okay. Um, this is one of the best jazz records ever made. Um, probably a top five jazz record all time for me. Uh, Paramount Savino meets Reggie Workman A part. This oh, is, I think, the second press. Um, nice. This, this is an amazing record. This is this is one I got from uh, Minko up in Connecticut. I'm not familiar with that. What, what's the title on it? A part. It was uh, reissued as with this cover. And this is one of the recent reissues from a few years ago. Okay. Who so, so put that out? What's that? To put it out. Uh, the reissues were done by Love Records, Groove Lab, or something. Hmm. Or no, oh, Octave, Lab. Octave Lab. Excuse me. Yeah, they did a whole series of those um, on an RSD, and Dusty Groove had them. Dusty Groove was about the only place I could find them. That's cool. Um, See what else is here. How's that sound? That reissue. Really good. I got a few more of them. Um, this one's the Sextet record. Oh wow! This is another Catalyst title. Yeah, pretty good. We got one all these records. <laughs> Seriously, of the stuff I've heard of, the stuff he did with Mal, Mal Aldrin's. This Mal one's, this one's got uh, a really good drummer, Matahiko Hino, mm. and Hino's um, Three Blind Mice. Stuff just came out reissued finally. Hmm. I need to get on top of that. Yeah, for sure. And then um, some more of those reissues. Uh, Peace and Love. Yeah, that's a badass. And then here's the one you've been jamming. Yeah. Really good. I was surprised. I was like, ah, this Who's is the guitar player on that because he is a, yeah. kind of a badass. He kind of takes over that record at times. I don't know if it says in the back or not. It's yeah, and they play that song "Ode to Workman," yeah. which is oh, the, you know Reggie Workman, obviously. Yes. Uh, another one, "Love Nature" with Gary Bartz. Oh wow! What label is that? Again, that, that reissue those reissues again on Love. Love. Okay. Let's check those and out. This one's probably my favorite one. Um, this is live uh, in Japan. This is uh, an original Three Blind Mice. Very cool. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think I'm just missing. I don't know if it came with an Obi or not. That probably probably did a maybe a top Obi. Yeah. This one. That's very Each cool. One I probably paid up for a little bit back. What's that sticker on the back there? Oh, distributed by Audio Source in Foster City, California. So they imported it. Yeah. Back okay. Very cool. Got a lot of those like that. No, not through on mice, but just you know, imports from back in the day. Here's here's some cheap heat, you know, Ballard. Like, especially this one, uh, May Dance on 
on inner city. Oh, neat. Yeah. This, this shoe you can find under 10 bucks. And this is a phenomenal. Really, really good. John Schofield's on guitar, Ron Carter, Tony Williams drums. Damn. Yeah, this this is one of the best cheap heat records that I know of. Hmm. Shit. I'll have to get that one too. And then uh, I've replaced yeah. Gato now with him. I'm obsessed with him now instead of this one you would think is not gonna be good. Double rainbow. Across the sky. Game. Terrible mm-hmm. cover, but uh Herbie Hancock's on this, Steve Grossman. I mean, this is this cooks. This, this one that's so another trio. One. Is that one a trio record then? Is what you're saying? Uh no, this is this has got this has got mm-hmm. tons of players. Oh, okay. Billy Hart on drums. Uh, Lenny White's on drums on some of this. Reggie Workman uh, mm-hmm. is on bass. Eddie Gomez is on, appears on bass on some of this. Jeez. This is a big group. This is a big bigger group. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, those are all great players. Very nice. Yeah, but I thought I'd it, you guys kind of. Got me spinning a few of those again. Oh yeah, Mike, what's up on the internet? Enjoy the stream. Sorry, I'm looking up a uh, Terra Masahino. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> haven't been able to buy any people's copies of all these records right now. Sure. Hasn't been able to buy because he he tried so many different things. You know, he, he when he first came in, he was definitely heavily influenced by Miles Davis. There was that, that even the there was a very similar tone. And I have not heard many guys even come close to Miles' tone. Right. And he had that in the early stuff. And, and But then he jumped into the crazy free stuff. I don't know what he was listening to to go that quickly from the Miles type stuff to the free. And then <clears throat> he changed Drugs. it up. When he got with Workman and yeah. got modal, you know, he, he went into a full modal zone. And then. Yeah. Then he, he changed, kept changing it up, and started doing. I don't know. I don't want to say fusion, but just I don't know. His later stuff is not not my cup of tea. There's a lot of records I didn't show that you can still get after Double Rainbow. But I think I showed this already, like on three streams. I'm gonna show it again. So it says Mal Aldrin moods, but oh, Tony okay. Fiorino's on this, and and he it's so crazy. The first track, man, on this record, I don't know what it's called. I'd love to find that. I've never found that one. M note. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah, I I found it. Found it. So good. Um, but you know, he does sound like Miles on this at times, and then other parts of it, it's like you know, kind of super free. Not super free, but you know, Mel Waldron free, I guess. Um, pretty cool. Yeah, anything the Mel. The second LP is just Mel Waldron playing the piano solo. Yeah, Waldron. Waldron's pretty much is, can't go wrong. I don't know if I've ever anything bad. No, I agree. Yeah, that one uh, is still in my rotation. Like, I have this rotation that I go through. Yeah. And, and um, you know, and I'll, and I'll listen to something until I'm either sick of it or feel like I know it. And it's this one's still in there. I've listened to this like seven or eight times. Oh, yeah. I, I was just on that. Can you? Great. Hang something on the wall with a marker where you cross out each time you did. Like cast mark. I have a I have an Excel spreadsheet for that. Louis, did BDE put that out? Yes. Yep. It oh, sounds yeah. excellent. That's it's great. great. Yeah. It's yeah, they do the Lord's work. Yeah, this this, this is an OG here. Oh shit! Let us see that. Nice. That's cool. Very cool. It's I missing, seen the whole it's thing the OG other than that. Very nice, Christine. I got that six seven years ago. It might keep disappearing. But there's there's a record um now he here. Did not. Loki is a lie. It's um with Hal Galper. You know Hal Galper? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I have that's in my auction tomorrow. I have a copy of it. That's in my top five jazz records of all time. Yeah, I have a I have it. And I think it's excellent. I found a copy. So it, another is the copy. copy nice? Oh yeah. Tony Williams. Oh, uh, it's in the auction. How am I going to get people to come to the auction? That's fair. Tony Williams is, loses his mind on that record. It's so good. It it's a uh, again, just he's a wall that he know. It's just a wall of force of nature. And Hal Galper is no joke either. No, yeah, but on his other stuff, he's not like on this one. 
No, no, that, that that's definitely his best record. Yeah. Um, come come to the auction. I have a copy. I'm doing a five year old's birthday party tomorrow. That sucks. You can, you can sneak away to get that one. I'll just have it have it in my ear. Dude, you know, if, yeah. if any of us Fucking on screen, first test dial up or you know first test cell phone coverage, I'm so far behind. If any of us, a fucking Matthew Petty and shit. If any of us are designed to live out a sitcom episode, it's you, yeah. Chris. Where you're like one room's a child's birthday party, then you have to change your clothes and go in the other room and bid on auction records. That's true. That's true. I'm going to Fort Worth tomorrow, Chris. What? Listen. What are you going? Uh, I don't know. I was informed of this recently in the last two hours. Oh. We're going to the Botanical Gardens. Oh, nice. That's like five minutes from my house. Mm. Where are you located, Louis? I'm in between Dallas and Fort Worth. I say I'm in Dallas okay. for simplicity, but you I'm in there. Say that. You should say where you're from. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Either you ever heard of Kelly's Art Shack near Dallas? Mm -hmm. That's my friend's place. Mm -hmm. No. Pretty cool. They, it's, it, She's she's an artist and they do paintings and they have groups that you know people sign up to go and learn how to paint and stuff like that. But they have a back mm -hmm. area. They have events and music and that's cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. There's a place I've learned about recently down in um, there's an area in Fort Worth. It's actually cool. It's called Magnolia. It's a street. And it's actually a decent place to go, unlike most of Fort Worth. Um, but anyway, they have a an art like an art collective down there, and they've been putting on. I missed it this year. I saw it after it had happened. They put on a um, Django Reinhardt festival every year. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's a baroque cool. fest. That's cool. oddly oddly specific, but you know, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out next year. Somebody's asking if this Red Garland record is a first. <clears throat> it's actually a second press. Um, Very cool. Oh wow. It's uh yeah, I found this in the bins. It was cheap. I forget it was no more than thirty dollars. Um Are you it's, kidding me? it's a second press. The first press cover has like a couple markings, red like this colored red markings on it. Oh. Um that doesn't have it, but I mean it's I think this came out like a year or two after the first press. You should pay them in that. Wow, it's a fireworks <laughs> label. It's fireworks, but it's Bergenfield and I, I and deep groove, Very you know, nice. all that stuff. But I think um I think the first label might be NYC. I'm not totally sure. Did anybody play oh. that record? My God, look at it. Yeah, no, it's really nice. I lucked out. Um, yeah. That's cool. I was really happy to see that OJC is putting out Groovy. Yeah. Um, the Red Garland. You know, I have like five, six original Red Garland records. Yeah. It's Greggy. Yeah, but this is well, in really nice shape. I'm better than you. No, you're not. <clears throat> I'm not going to I'm not going to a five year old's birthday party tomorrow. There's gonna to be margaritas there, man. For the kids? Yeah, for the kids. Margaritas mm -hmm. in a bounce house. Hold on. And then and maybe you are better than me. Yeah. So maybe. we so Felipe, Chris, and I uh did a Sam uh records deep dive. So this was one of oh, the yeah, records that, that were called out. So yesterday <clears throat> I I have this. The the jacket's pretty messed up. It's it's Wait, got like really yesterday? old. What's that? Did you, buy, did you buy this yesterday? No, I bought this like okay. years ago. Okay. At this point. I haven't bought anything since I bought the turntable. So right, I'm just checking. <laughs> you don't have to. I'm not buying anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is out on a limb. This is Clark Terry. I forget the year on this now, but it's uh it's with uh, Paul Gonzalez. I played this yesterday and the vinyl just sounds so dead quiet uh, for oh, like wow. an early you know, for a late fifties, early jazz title. Um, and some of those Argos I have, even if they're clean, they have a little bit of noise, but I think the earlier you go with Argo, the better the vinyl is. So Damn anyway, this is, this is a really cool one. Um, I had to get this from Australia. I don't know if I mentioned that already, oh, wow. but yeah, there's like all this old tape on it. That's disgusting, but I'm just, I don't even want to mess with it, but the record is, records, man. the record is where it's at. I mean, this thing yeah. is flawless. Very it's nice. really, really clean. And deep yeah. groove art Argo. Wow. Does, it play, does it play the reverse way? Yes, of course. Since you got for us, yeah. What? But anyway, this is cool. I, so I, yeah, got you, I got you. I've been going back and listening to a lot of my collection, which is it's been pretty nice not buying records, honestly. I have a lot more time on my hands now. You know, 
there's a I mean, that that um the happy horns of clark terry on impulse is a great one um it's yeah. the, the worst cover ever um because it's just bad but then also he did a couple of records on mainstream that are really good that i have i i i've never uh attached my with every clark terry i got never really did i think he's he's i think he's a I like those lead records. I, I like him as sideman. Like his sideman work is really strong. Um, but I think, you know, from what I've heard, he plays like a, a bop style. So it's going to be that older sound. Yeah. He he's a you know, pop he with... guy. So, you know, so that's what you're going to get. So I like that sound. Yeah. I like whenever it too. I, whenever I run into the Clark Terry's, I'm usually with my friend Joe and he gets them all. No. Um, he's a big fan okay. of that artist. He, he, we got a bunch of Emerson ones. Um, oh, nice. originals from lunchbox one day for i mean they didn't cost him anything um it's gonna help aj out but you know. i want to help aj out we'll help aj out in a second all right i just want to show one more thing so, so we're just anything. asking what's that huge jazz book this is i think the eighth edition right oh cool <laughs> is that penguin does it yeah, have all their phone numbers in it and yeah, it is I, big. I think the most recent one people really criticized because they changed uh they changed how they index the artist. I forget what happened, but it was really difficult to find things, and they didn't have an appendix. I think they've since updated the new version with an appendix, but uh, this one is how it works. Like, is it just little paragraphs about every record, or what? Exactly. Yeah. So, have you so... made it all the way through that bad boy, Mike? No. <laughs> I would actually read that. No, no. it's a reference. It's like reading a dictionary. No, hey, it's cool. Tell us a story, Uncle Mike. But yeah. no, it is good. When I, first got it, I, when I first got it, I referenced it all the time. And then, honestly, like a lot of the stuff I'm getting now isn't mentioned in here. So there's oh. no references. And I have I haven't been using it as much as I used to. But but yeah, I mean, I do go back to it. And then I also have the Rolling Stone guide, which is really thin. But what's yeah. cool is they give you like, the, it, you know, for the more well-known artists, they give you like a quick snapshot of their discography and all their star rankings in a row. Mm -hmm. So you can... It, you know, obviously, the reviewers for jazz, I feel like you really have to kind of ignore them almost. Like, I think they're they're interesting data points, but to say, like, one record's four and a half stars and one is four, like, what what does that mean? Like, that is, that could easily be different for someone else. And it's like they're four trying to half. contextualize yeah. it in so many different ways. Like, right. like so I, I, I feel like they're good references, but I, I don't think people should over, um, you know, this no, is yeah. so ironic. Yeah. It's like, what if there's, you know, but what if one record has a slight roll off at 10K? No, no. Hey, Mike, Mike, do you have that book where Fred tells you how to sell a record for $12,000? Well, yes. I do. Like, uh, anyway, I, th I think, you know, I think it's cool to have. And this is the eighth edition. The ninth edition, I think, is really expensive because it's the last edition that uses the version, the indexing version that everybody seems to like. Mm -hmm. And then the 10th one, I think you can get on Amazon for cheap. The eighth one is somewhat affordable. The ninth one is like hundreds of dollars now. So mm -hmm. you can't even get it. I'll just read Wikipedia because they're all listed there. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're not. What do you mean? Well, I mean, people have to add them. So if people don't do it. Uh, sure. And then also, like, they don't provide, usually they don't provide as much detail. So, like, they'll say, like, Penguin Guide gave it three and a half stars, but they don't give the paragraph. That's true. What, you can you know, read us a sample, uh, a random review? Okay. Let's see. Who should we pick? No, random. Yeah, I bought that pedal, by the way. Down. Just flip it and put your finger yeah, down. Well, I want to do somebody I know. Well, no, it was Maynard good. Ferguson. How about that? There go. Okay, here we go. Yes. <laughs> All right. So how it does? So I'll quickly show how it works. So there's his entry for Maynard Ferguson. Okay. It says trumpet player, flugelhorn, valve trombone, baritone horn, and band leader. It just gives you a quick snapshot. He was born in Canada. He's an alumnus of big bands. Uh, Charlie Barnett, um, Ferguson combined a fiery tone with fast articulation, um, influenced by Count Basie, Stan Kenton. Uh, he's also, what is this, been receptive to new repertoire. So I guess he's doing contemporary stuff of the time. And then it goes into his titles yeah, in chronological right. order. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It has a lot. Um, yeah. So let's see. So, con uh, Conquistador on Colombia, catalog number 34457. This is three stars. It gives you everybody who's on it, so it's a big group. And then <laughs> the review is dominated by the themes from Rocky, 
I think I know this record. Yes. Have you guys ever seen this record where he does the Rocky themes? Yes. He that was a big it's hit really for them. He, awful. He played it all the time when he was on TV. So uh, dominated by the themes from Rocky, which had some ch chart success, uh, and from Star Trek. This yep. is an easy album to overlook. Uh, so long, uh, so long after its release, it was a second turning point in the trumpeter's career, propelling him to new prominence. Uh, the bands he put together in those days were a notable mix of brilliant instrumentalists and poppy session men. The vocal component of Mr. Mello is likely to prompt second thoughts from anyone who is captured by the sheer bravado of gonna fly now. Yada, yada, yada. It just goes on. So it gives you a little bit of insight there. It's nothing crazy. I'm going to get you an agent where you can uh, start doing the audio books. Yeah, you should, you, you should record that and make it a live stream. Just read the whole fucking thing, dude. <laughs> uh, but then... Be awesome. Hold on. The, if I ever need to like, filibuster, if I'm ever elected senator, yes. I'll just read that. Yeah. Well, you're the Speaker of the House. And, <laughs> and then there's this one. This is oh, what yeah. I mentioned. So, this is referenced in a lot of the entries online when people are talking about reviewers. From what I understand, this just came out once, one year. Yeah. This, this is it. So when Mary, people Mary it, sent me a copy of that. I have it's that. From it's from 1985, and I don't think it's ever been updated. And this, although it's thin, what it does is like it has like Ron Carter. So you can see Ron Carter. And then it just lists his albums with stars next to it. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of get a quick snapshot of whatever titles they they included. Usually it's everything up to 1985 in this case. Um, and then, yeah, there's like a little bio beneath them. Very cool. And that's it. So there's really no context to, to every album. It just it, it just provides a star rating. And I think the person who does it. It's the Michelin Guide to Jazz. Is you can read the phone book to us. John, John Swenson. So yes. anyway, they're just fun to collect. I like to have it's these. a book that you keep near your toilet. So when you have to do it, you know. Good yeah, just when I first got these, I used them more, but now I just I don't really reference them that much. Yeah, I mean discogs, you know. Right. Yeah. There's other there's other sources. Um Somebody, and again, I'll, yeah, it's, we said it's all the sources the internet. Most records on Discord don't have any reviews at all, though. Yeah, they do. People leave comments on the bottom. No, I mean, there's tons of records. There's nothing, though. Well, maybe if you, then you should add something. Discord. I do. I've, 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 know all the military secrets? Not Discord, Discogs. No, Discord is where we all hang out, man. Oh, where you, so you all are... Are you not on the Discord? Military stuff? No. Yes, that's where we share our military secrets, Dave. Jeez. Howdy. Hey, guys. Hey. Dave, Dave, are you on the Discord? I am. I know you you're on it, but uh, local bandography, Dave. What other David? No, no, I, 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 it's it's all it's amazing that I'm on this. I'm, I'm anti tech. <laughs> well, the, the the Discord. Are you familiar with Discord? No, well, not really. It's what 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 kind? Let me of let me quickly show you what it is because I think I think some people glorified Twitter. No, no, it's no. Like an old chat room. No. Oh, it's great. Let me show you. Hold on. Just show Louis dumb comments. Okay, hold on. Let me see. <laughs> Am I still sharing my? No. Oh, okay, no. It's not video. It's all. It's all just it type, can be. typing in. Hold on. I'll, we'll show you. Mike doesn't Window. know either. either. Where is it? Here. Okay. So this is the Discord. So here. So this is Jazzbums server, and we have the we have a Jazzbums, uh, you know, channel now spinning. People put what they're listening to, and. It's literally a chat room, like you just say, like, oh yeah. So it's 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 hey. basically inst inst Instagram chat room thing. It's like I don't I wouldn't compare it to Instagram. I mean, I, I feel like this is kind of more old school. Like, do you ever use IRC or anything Instagram. like that? Um, but like this is the Discogs and eBay. So if people see like good deals on Discogs or eBay, they they post them here for people to grab. You find oh, so good you deals. Can go back and look and find this stuff later on. It's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's just on forever. <laughs> So uh, there's oh. new releases. So when anything gets announced, people drop it here. There's a Sinatra oh. one, which is my little room. <laughs> and then uh, we all are yeah, the class classical bums is on yeah. here. So uh, people talking about classical. Um, there's what else? There's new videos too here. So like uh, if you were to put out a video, you could drop it here. So Dave, you can see Dave dropped his. Oh. Right. We have the uh, Deep Groove oh. Mono's new video. Uh, I know this dude. Frederick's oh. new video. So Frederick just shared this. Who's go down one? Him? 
Yeah, I know that guy from somewhere. Yeah, that's Rich. He he uh, curates the RBG Legacy website and has done some really well cited research on Van Gelder. Um, yeah, he's an interesting character. Yeah, he and did, he's on he's on the Discord. That's not him sharing it, but he he does he did make that appearance. record store tour deal. Yes, yeah, he did a video on that. Yeah, but anyway, it's cool, and you know, it's. You know, I, I work from home, so I just keep this up while I'm working, and it's just fun just to check in and chat, see what people are doing. Okay. But, yeah, I what recommend. Did, people, what did, what did Logan say to you in those four messages that haven't been read? Hmm. Mike, can you well, put that just, on your his Discord? Use Logan's providing me legal, phone? legal. Yeah, he's on my phone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's on your phone, but it's okay. worth checking out. And it's it's an it, we have almost 600 members. It's pretty active. Like, I mean, send, send me the link on the Instagram after this. Sure, I'll send it to you now. Oh, and I'll also I, drop it. And yeah. Mike, tomorrow I'm going to look at a large uh, classical collection. Oh, at, really? At noon. If you want, I can send you some video, maybe you can give me some pointers. Yeah, there's, definitely. There is a heaping stack of Deutsche gramophones in it. Okay, I'm not too big on Deutsche, old Deutsche gramophones. Oh, okay. I just well, know I, that I, I just like the ones I try gramophone. to get the ones people sound good like they say they sound good and for me they just never sound that great mm. okay yeah there's other yeah, stuff yeah. i just saw that many of those and i was like oh. yeah and also i don't really know enough to I mean, i'm sure there are dgs that are really awesome i'm sure okay. there are but yeah i just i feel like everyone's like get that get the old tulip ones that means they were done on the tube console and i've gotten those and they don't like to me they sounded absolutely terrible so i'm yeah. sure that it's just the pressings that I've got. It's not yeah, I need to be seeing seen. if there's Columbia's in there and Decca's and EMI's yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, but send the video. I'd love to see okay. that. I have a question, Louie. Yo. I forgot what it was. Never mind. Good job. Damn it. It just happened live on TV. <laughs> they say the mind's the first thing to go. <laughs> I like that record you got behind you, Chris. Freedom. The mind's a terrible thing to say. So let's talk about it. Um, I'll show some records. That's a damn good record. Yeah, I found this. Louis, um, I'm sad to say I went to a record store yesterday. Oh. You lied to me again. I didn't lie to, lie to you. <laughs> I had a dentist appointment because of the story. I had a dentist appointment. I was going to get three fillings. And I get there and I'm sitting there for like an hour in the chair waiting. And they're like, okay, um, so we can't give you the, the laughing gas today because we're getting an inspection of our blah, blah, blah. So we have everything ready if you want to go ahead and go. I'm like, no, dude, I'm not getting, you're not touching me without giving me the gas, bro. There's no fucking way. So I'm going back Monday. Anyway, That's so afterwards, I'm sad, and my wife told me to go buy some records, so I did. I found this at Doc's for 25 bucks, which I was happy with. So and this little BMP uh, Freedom Suite. So this is, it's interesting on the back, it talks about how um, somebody did like a history of, of, political records and jazz and they skipped over this one and Sonny Rollins wrote them a letter saying, Hey man, this was one of the first because I made this in nineteen fifty eight. So yeah, that one's incredible. It is. And so it's Sonny Rollins, Oscar Pettiford, and Max Roach. It's a trio. Like what 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 could be better than that, right? So that one's awesome. Powerful record. Um I showed this about a month ago, but I finally listened to it. This is fucking killer. Yeah. Yeah. Get any of this up from them. Is that is that original? No, hell no. It's a it's it's a cool. It's a um, yeah. it's a it's a reissue. It's really nice. It sounds great. Um, from Eargong Records. Mm -hmm. Yep. Hey, you know, Chris. Remember before we came on, me and Chris were talking about records we sold that we shouldn't have. Yeah. I had an OG of that. I sold to Notes and Tones. Mm, he's, um, he's suckered you on I that. have an OG of that as well. But I want to get more of this group. It's um, old and new dreams. It's these yeah. guys, you know, Don Cherry. Yeah. Uh, Drew Redmond, Charlie Hayden, Eddie Blackwell. I thought you were scared of Don Cherry. No, dude, let's hate that other record. And it's Pharaoh Sanders' fault. It's the rest of the record trade, except when Pharaoh plays, and then he should he should have fed up. Why don't you like Don Cherry? Why would he be scared? I love Don Cherry. I like Don he Cherry. Doesn't like, he doesn't like cherries, Louie. Chris was yeah, talking all kinds of shit about poor Donald. I was not. I said I don't like where's Bro where in Brooklyn or whatever. These are called. also lies. You've been lying for the past five minutes. He's a big fan of Nina Cherry. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, Buffalo yeah. stance, Rob. Yeah. 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 What is that? Nineteen seventy. Oh, cool. No, 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 eighty-one. Eighty-one. Same group. Yeah. Eighty-one ECM. 
Yeah. They did one that's called like a memorial or a tribute to Ed Blackwell, and he plays on it, which is kind of weird. So that's great. I have that. Yeah. Dude, somebody listened to my Libby DeCamp um, oh, recommendation. Yeah, Got it. Yeah. It's sick. That's awesome. It's cheaper than a fuzzy pedal. I bought that fucker, by the way. I couldn't. I was showing record you, rude oh, bastard. Yeah. What is well, this? this? And this was just reissued by ECM on that Luminescent really? series. Yeah. Yeah, so you could. Well, I, I don't have that. I'm gonna buy that. This is, this is an original. I think I paid. Actually, I can tell you exactly how much. I paid 25 bucks for this, um, but this has creeped up in price. I think it's. I think it's probably like. I think that ECM luminescence repress is probably the way to go. Um, I'm I sure they sound really good, right? 40 bucks. I don't have any of them. Uh, Mike Notes and Tones, I think, has an original and that luminescence repress, and he says that one is the way to go. Okay. They sound really Mark, good. Which Mark is saying that he has lots of Tulip GGs and they sound great. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what I look for. But I find them, I bring them home, and they're not that great sounding. You know why? Why? They're not jazz, bro. That's why. Yes. <laughs> no more shit. This record is. Oh, I appreciate your honesty. I got this this week. This is uh, Enrico Alla Quartet. This record is fucking dope, man. It's um, so it's free jazz. It's Enrico Rava on trumpet, Roswell Rudd on trombone, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, JF Jimmy Clark on bass, who I didn't know, but he's a, he's a murderer. Oh awesome. yeah, I have that. That's great. Yeah, it's great. And then Aldo Romano on drums. But That's the thing pick. to me, it's like it's free jazz, but it never gets like super almost funky or whatever. What they will come up. It doesn't get scary. Doesn't get scary, but it um it's super slow in, at times. Which it's man, I'll tell you, when um when when the trumpet and the trombone, there's some of these like dissonant notes they hit at times that just were kind of soul crushing. I was high as fuck, and I was just like, good god, this is fucking crazy. So I, I love this record. I listened to it three times since I bought it the other day. Um, okay, here's one that's not good. This is um. Buddy Montgomery, this rather than that. Do you like this record, Rob? I've never shown it before. Better. I don't have that. Oh. I would this... never buy that record. How silly are you? Are. What is Buddy play? play? What's Buddy this play? Is vibes, vibes and piano. Is he one of the brothers? Music? Montgomery. Yeah, is he related to the other brothers? Yeah, there are three yeah, brothers. Sure. Don't you know it's anything it's about that? Yeah, no, but I wasn't sure. Right. It's 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 yeah. So it's Buddy Montgomery. He plays the piano in Vibes. Then Monk Montgomery plays the drums, and West Montgomery, of course, plays the guitar. Unfortunately, yeah. West Montgomery is not on this record because he passed away before they recorded it in 1970. This is a 73 issue. Thing, right? Yeah. It sounds like shit, and it's not a good record. I wish I, I could have my eight bucks back. Like, it's a jazz bone burn, dude. Um, it, it, the music's okay at times, but, like, I know what I don't like about it. Monk Montgomery plays a Fender bass on this, like, you know, electric bass. And it's so muddy and this indistinct sounding. It's just terrible. It's trash. Hey, I, uh, I, I have an under good understanding that some of his relatives watch this stream. It's okay. <laughs> this will be available in one of Rob's auctions in three months when everybody forgets that I said this slides. Anyway. Hey, I, 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 I have a few more records I got for free from a record store. They had a big spot. Oh, no, I wasn't done. But okay. Uh oh. Go ahead, Rob. I'm taking well, a break. You're supposed to end on the shitty records. Don't you know how this works? No, you end on the best ones. No, well, you're, supposed to, you're, supposed to do, you're supposed to do this. Does anyone I've know this? Of, I've heard of Herbie Grain, yeah. Oh, Joe Farrell's on this. This is a CTI record. Cool. Isn't it any good? No, it's got Eric Gale. Hey, give me time. To mm. so, look so look you, you show the records before you listen to them. No, no, then you can't have an opinion, though. I have this in my want list, so I picked this up. It's uh, a Muse right guard. Right right. All right, nice. Yeah. Looks good. Is it cheap? They're free. These were free oh, records. Free. Yeah. Put it in my pile. Um, this is scary record. I, I have another Dave Liebman. But look at I didn't realize how hairy he is. Look at this. Yeah. It's disgusting. I thought that was a tattoo. There's hair creeping up through it. And then, what's this <laughs> shit going on here? I don't know what the fuck's going on there, dude. The smoke. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's something else. <laughs> I'm always uh, scared of these um, later. Horse later horse silvers. Yeah. yeah. 
So who's on that with them? Who is it? I'm not sure about his hat choice there. You got you got your uh, Ron Carter, Bob Crenshaw, Purdy's on here. Tom Harrell, Bob Berg, Jerome Richardson, Buddy Collette, Bobby Bryant, uh, Frank Rossellino. Well, everyone's on here. This murderer. murderer. Hmm. It's the murderer. Frank Rossellino, the murderer. What did he do? He murdered, he murdered his kid. His family. Yeah. Oh, That's yeah. right. So. This is a Chris Jasbaum record recommendation. No, 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 it's not. It looks like a shitty record, dude. Is it, is it what's the label look like? Is it black B? Yeah, it's a black B. But uh Chris is okay with the amount of hair on Dave Leap. He didn't know what a razor was back yeah, when lighten it up, please. I'm almost a, I'm almost thinking he should just light his hair on fire. <laughs> like are they free basing? What are they doing? I can't oh. believe they use that photo. <laughs> They're sharing a cigarette, I guess. Mm. The horizon. Mm -hmm. Who else is on here? You got, there's different uh, incarnations on each song. Oh, are you going to try Leon, to take the marker off? Leon Thomas is on this. I can try during the stream. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen that. Right? Yeah. So Rob, I have to leave that. Rob, we're going to see Rob's patented marker removal process. Can you walk us through it? Okay. So you get a dry erase uh, marker here. I hope this fails again so bad. This is the first time. That was amazing. Yeah, that, you just that, made it worse. And the, 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 the title is lighted up, please. Obviously, she's okay with a hairy man. Yes. <laughs> that's that, that's outstanding. He, that, that's a total keeper just for the cover. Okay. The back, the back picture for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, oh, yeah. So what I did is I scribbled on the K there. Okay. We see Let, that. Set it and forget it. Let's I didn't see you scribble. I think it's fake news. I thought you used like lighter fluid or something. No, no, no you used a dry erase, dry erase marker. Let okay. me go get a paper towel so I can wipe it off. But the lighter fluid doesn't take off that sticker that's on there, though. It'll, it'll. You want me to do that too? I'll show yeah, you. It's, it's, it's a much, clinic. Gotta, this is how much I'm doing. I, yeah. This Mazzy doesn't do this shit when I sell when he right. sells records. This is how you get a free record and sell it on an auction online for eight bucks. Yeah, jazz dude share yeah. sandwiches and cigarettes on covers a lot. It's true. It's true. What, what, are, you, what are you doing, dude? What are you up there? That looks you good. Cereal over there? Okay. That cat? What's your cat doing? Kamir's trying to get my Cheetos. What was your cat's name again? Kamir. Oh. I'm are are you eating Cheetos with uh with lightsaber it? chopsticks? Yes, I am. Fucking awesome, dude. I respect that. The only way to eat Cheetos is with chopsticks, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't suck the cheese off your fingers. Oh, you don't get the cheese all over your hands. Yeah. yeah. Also, the lightsaber chopsticks is a genius. Is a genius idea. Do they light up? Are they lit up? Oh, cool. Hmm. Well, my, the, the, the eating sounds kind of gross. Yeah. You'll get over it. No, no. no. Maybe, maybe, just, maybe mute. Back with maybe. the paper. <laughs> it off. All right. So, what are we doing? We're checking back in now. So you 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 said it and forgot it, and now you're it, coming it, back it to didn't it. Come off. What it didn't didn't come off? Off? Let's see. You didn't even show us the evidence. Did, did the new marker come it, off? It, well, it looks the same as it did before. Do you have actually, um, actually some of uh, Dave's hair came off. You, if you're gonna you demonstrate have, this, you have to show what you're doing on the record. Like hold yeah, it up. Okay. The so it it, it kind of lightened it up a bit there. Not, yeah. 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 Do you have a, um, a magic eraser? Because that that can work. If, I'll take everything, if I try rubbing it on the screen, will you? If it's, if it, if it's a glossy jacket, it won't. There's okay, like a I'll lighter. Use, I'll put lighter fluid on this. All okay. right, so now we're going to see this if this works. No, let's sit. Bro, I'm eating you, Lily. When you're done eating, let us know. Seriously. It's like an high def. It's like ASMR, Louise. It is. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, it, it's working. Yeah. Except there's it's another. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on. on, there's another label underneath. Oh it. shit! Oh, okay, that one's not coming off. It's a lie. No. <laughs> a fucking lie. What? You gotta get that off. It's covering the guy's name. Oh, hold on. I'm I'm gonna I'm really gonna see what happens here. Yeah. So look at Dave's hair. I'm gonna... Oh yeah, draw it in. Yeah. Now what's the th so for people watching? What's the theory yeah. here? Is that you put the dry erase marker on, and then it it like I I mean it depends on the type of cover, but it usually it'll take off the um 
permanent marker that was used, the Sharpie. Everyone in the chat thinks you should just catch the record on fire. That, that's kind of crazy. He's growing hair. It's a werewolf. <laughs> He's got a beard now. So that's Hold on. Weird. There, I just turned him into sort of a more give him a beard. Yeah. All right. Then you take the paper towel. Okay. Now, do you think you're not letting it sit for long enough? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what type of marker this was, but it's lighting it up. Yeah. <laughs> it looks weird. They got, a match. they got a single match between them. I guess these guys a fucking lighter, man. Well, they're lighting it up more ways than one. Yeah. Surely I need to, surely I'll find that in a dollar bin somewhere. Yes. Well, Fair let's enough. go back to taking the lie sticker off. <clears throat> What if you just put the uh, the the um, oh there you go lighter fluid on the marker? Will that do anything? So Tom it'll, saying it'll right. take. I mean, the lighter fluid doesn't do, but like alcohol or water will take off the cover. You know? So so what Tom is saying is that the dry erase markers have alcohol, which dilute the permanent marker, and then uh, you can use that to just remove everything. This is turning into a bad joke. There's another label underneath this one. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah, there is. What was going on at this radio station? Who knows? I'm Pretty leaving. Violent. It is a fake commercial by Rob. Uh, here, Jeez. Here's what I'll do. Anyone? Because the record's in really nice condition. Yeah. So I might give this away to somebody. I'll, I, I, you know, I give away records to people who buy in the auction, so I'll just put this in the giveaway. The record's in beautiful shape. I'm more out of all these. This is the one I've had this on my wish list. Oh, I've never seen yeah, that. about it at night. Hmm? You think, you, did you think about that record when you were lying awake in the dark? I usually so, think about you. Oh, that's sweet. This is a um, white label promo. It was. <laughs> um. So who's on that with them? Is it solo piano? No. It says with Leo Wright. Do you? I don't not understand. So who, so who else is on Leo Wright, list? Chris Amberger, and Eddie Moore. Don't know. Hamburger. Yeah. Chris gets a hamburger. This is my kind of record. What's that, Todd? Todd can you go? Uh, he showed on the, the top left of the front jacket. What does that say? Top left. I've never seen that in Muse. I haven't no, either. I haven't either. What the hell? What is the there's more than one, Mike. Yeah, this yeah. is future. All right, there you go. Dude, no, what what you project right? video, dude. Future project video. Not dude, we're looking it up now. All right, Todd Barkin presents. Yeah, I, I honestly think this is the, I think I swear I think this is the only record that has that. It is too. <laughs> so I, I just put it. I put Keystone Corner Muse into this. Apparently, Discord. apparently Todd Barkin got too close to Dave Liebman and his hair yeah. swallowed him. Yeah, exactly. Well, okay, so obviously Keystone Corner was the venue in San Francisco. Oh, no, there's tons of live records at Keystone Corner. So what are they calling it? You know, yeah, this yeah, is overrated, yes. By the is. way, this was Jerry Garla's copy. <laughs> hey, yeah, wait, like look. That's the only one. Here's the magic of lighter fluid. Yeah. Oh, nice. You get that shit off from underneath it. Yeah, what no, is that? That, one, that yellow is there forever. Uh, well, that, do, that makes it worse. You, know, you can uh, use your fingernail. Oh. Kind of then the record just all scratched up. No, I mean this is my copy, so I'm keeping. Uh, this. Have you ever I'm seen a copy of that in the wild before, Rob? I've never, never I've, seen. No, well, I mean I'm collecting Red Garland. Anytime I get a Red Garland record, mm -hmm. but he has about five records, I think, on me. Four or five. I always say, if you see a music... Oh, he, owned, he owned Keystone, according to CJ. He did? Yeah. Well, I have that um, Record Store Day record that Zev put out like 12 years ago. Okay. Him live at the Keystone. It's a 3LP record. Who live at the Keystone? Red, Red Garland. Oh, okay. Cool. I mean, yeah. I'm interested in this one. This one seems like it could be a good one. All right, let's go through it. Some good players on it. So... Eric Gale is a guitar player. Joe Farrell, can't go wrong. Jeremy Stieg's a flute guy, right? I don't know him. No. I don't know him. 
Toots is really. always good on the harmonica. I don't know Jimmy Madsen and Mike. Mike Maneri. Did he murder someone, Chris? Uh, I don't think so. I'm going to murder you when I meet you. All right, here are pictures. <laughs> no murdering, please. <laughs> There's Eric Gale. Nice. There's Toots. There's Toots. Toots is awesome, man. Yeah. Toots, Toots got a cigarette right there like the other album? Toots plays jazz um, guitar and mostly harmonica. There's Joe. There's Mike. Very shiny cover. Yeah. Jenny Jackson. Where this is a weird. Thing? Yeah, I've it's never. Is this? I've, this is it's a reissue? Weird. Yeah. Well, it's a regular. Is it yeah. RVG? Yes, RVG in the dead box. What's Mike play on there? Who? What's Mike play on there? Mike. Mike is um, vibes. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's only on one song. Yeah. Yeah. Boots is probably. on one song on harmonica. Fred Greiner. Hmm. Yeah, I bet you're gonna hate this record. This one? No. Do you want it in your stack? No. I'm good. <laughs> you know what? I want to get every CTI, but, you know, I got time. I'll, I'm going to try and rub, like, rub this on you and see if you, I can wipe you off this. <laughs> you want that off? Oh, Budget File says it's a cheesy album. It's right up your alley. It, it, it What's chi? What kind? Cheddar? Swiss? Yeah. Oh, let's go through the discography. We've so done this. We've done this before. We have it. We don't have to go through everything. I just, because Chris, you're like, I want to collect them all. I was just curious yeah. how how many titles that would include. It's mainly like all... six thousand series that I really care about. The which series? The six thousand. So the three thousands are when they were when he was with A and M when Creed was. When CTI was still with AM, right? This is a good, an amazing okay. record. There's a bunch of good records there. Wave is is awesome. Yep. Um, I mean, all, all of these are great. Okay. But anyway, so that's that's kind of the first series they had. The thousand series is very small. I think it's like twofers or something weird. I don't know what the hell it is. Okay. Uh no, it's outside of jazz. It's like it's like folk shit. Okay. But this is the main series, the six thousand. Six thousand. Okay. Yeah, red clay being the best. Mm, yeah, <clears throat> I haven't heard them all, but like stone. I mean, all these are all these are great. You should go through this list if you want to go through something. Great. Right, yeah, I mean, we can do that. So, so you know, the first titles: Hubert Law's um, "Crying Song." Does anybody hey, have this? I have I've it. Heard it. Yeah, it's great. So, what's the style? A typical, I mean, it's a typical CTI, man. Okay. Big band sounds great. Hubert Law is also a flute player. Um, you know, this is the one. This is probably I feel like the most popular one is Red Clay because it it is yeah. fire. I have a copy. I got my copy for like I think generally they go for fifty to sixty bucks now. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, but I think I got my copy for I can't remember. It was maybe like twenty bucks. I'm glad I got a lot of these records. I got a copy I paid forty dollars for, and it's a piece of shit. <laughs> what? Your red clay? Yeah, it's so fucked. It's like just garbage. Yeah. I'm gonna what go eat. That? I'll see you guys later. Oh, okay. okay. See you, buddy. I might be back, but I gotta go. Okay. Eat. You just had yeah, I know. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> see you, man. So this we got Freddie Hubbard trumpet, Joe Henderson. Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, and Lenny White. Yeah, yeah. Lenny White. Lenny so, fucking White, man. This is a great record. He's on, he's on Bitches Brew, right? Yes. yes. And he's also on uh, Blackstone Legacy, too. Yes. He is one he's of on the Yeah, he's great. He's still around. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he interviewed him. I interviewed him about yeah. six weeks ago. So he's with Chick. Yep. Um, he played with Jerry Allen. Don't get distracted. Woody Shaw. Okay. All right. Let's not get distracted. But yeah. He's on Blackstone Legacy. That's so really, really strong quintet there. It's then Stoneflower. Book. I know a lot of people like this as well. I don't have this one yet. That's this a great record. 
It's kind of, look, I mean, it's kind of, Ron Carter plays on all these records, dude. They're all just yep. badass, you know, players. Yep. Uh, Joe Farrell Quartet. That's actually Rob has that one. really Rob. good a cheap record. Rob, come back. Yes. We're talking yeah, about C. Farrell. We like have all these. All the all the Joe Farrell CTIs are fantastic. I have, I have both covers. There's two different covers yeah. or two different okay. titles. Two different titles. What's the other? What's the other cover here. look like? I mean, I'll, I think they're right here. So I mean, the, so the eight okay, thousand series, yeah, yeah. Okay. This is the other. This it's the same record, but the different cover and different title. Yeah. Oh wow, I've never seen that cover. Is yeah. that an 8,000 series? That's great. What's the number on it? Let's look at the record. Just oh, white it. label. 6067. Six, six, oh, it's a promo. Weird. Very nice. Cool. All right. This one, this cool. one's a wonderful. This is a Xanadu. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a great cover. Yeah. That is a great cover. Skateboard Park. I kind of want that now. All, all of these. Here's the other one, and I have yeah. two of these. Cool. Yeah, it's OG. I also have the green label one too. Well, I need that record. You should send me the green label. Do you need this one? Yeah, I don't have it. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me verify that. I might have it. Let me make sure. Let me see which one's better. Then, got a white label promo of this one. We're gonna get. To, we're gonna go through. Yeah, yeah hold on, hold on, hold on. We're gonna go through the records. Hold on, Buster. Yeah, this this might that. be the best one right here. I have that. It's good. All right. Okay. So what's next? Bill Evans. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Then there's a few. Uh, Bill Evans Montreux two. I don't um, have that one. Unfortunately, I need it. There's only Rob, one Bill one? Evans. One Bill Evans. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah, have that. that. Look at that. It's it's classic, dude. It's Eddie Gomez, Marty Morell. Yeah, I have that one. Yeah. Um, I have. A, I also have a test pressing of this one. This uh, Stanley Turrentine <clears throat> Sugar. Yes. I just picked up an OG of Sugar. I'm going to sell my reissue. That's a good one, man. Penny Don't you want this, Mike? Mike, didn't you? I thought you, oh, you want Cherry. Yeah, Cherry's pretty good. I, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, wow. I don't, well, the, the Desmond ones are good. Regular old yellow. Okay, so I got to say, this Milt Jackson Sunflower, people are like. That is, it's really good. A ton of comments in there. Oh, and also right. Stoneflower. So yeah. I'm mixing those up. But um, all right. You have That's the next, this one, don't you? I do have this one. This is Afro Classic. Um, this one's cool. So, like, <clears throat> they do, you know, they're doing Bach. They do a couple Bach. Uh, they do this Mozart. And then they do a theme from Love Story and then Fire and Rain. So it's pretty unique. I actually cataloged this with my classical. Yeah, it's it's a good record. I like that. It's great. But it's it's pretty cool. Given that you know what they're playing and who's playing it, like yes. a bunch of jazz musicians. Yeah. I have that Hubert Laws, the Rite of Spring album I came across. That's kind of classical. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. That's that CTI? Yes. Yeah, it is. It. It. Okay, cool. All right. This one's Gilberto with Turrentine. Don't have this one yet. Don't know this one. It's Astrid. What are you just going to skip it, man? The flavor yeah, of Yeah. I mean. <laughs> What do you want to say? Yeah, what are you worth looking up cheap. It's got toots on it. It's got toots. Ron Carter. Ron Carter again. Yeah, always. Gene Burton Cheney is great. Dio Dio Dato, how are you pronounce it? Yeah, exactly. So it's a, you know, it's a it's a big a big band with cello. Next. Uh George Benson. Oh, this is good. Beyond the Blue Horizon. Yeah. Man, there's a lot of background on this. It's a good one, man. Who's on it? Ron Carter. <laughs> Jack Dijonette. Yeah. Clarence Palmer on Hammond. Cool. Yeah, it's a sick record, dude. It's a really good one. It's not as um like as big, you know, big band, not big, you know, it's a much smaller group than a lot of the CTI records. Yep. All right. Um Stanley Turrentine's Salt Song. Oh, this is a good one. Never seen this one. I got that one. I have that album. Yeah, good one. <laughs> good one. Yeah. Stanley yeah. Tarantino meets the rhythm section. Force Parlin plays on this record. Does he? George yeah. Carlin. Oh shit. <laughs> Billy Cobham. 
Give it laws, you know. Cool. Suzuka's on there. Yeah. From Brazil. Yeah. I'm on try. I mean, it's a these these records are cool, man. They have all kinds of just famous players and it's just random random people on them, you know. I like this one. I have it. All right. What are people saying in the peanut gallery? I think they're more than shitless. Yeah. Yeah. All the records. Okay. Seems like everybody's loving these. Yeah. This. God bless the child, right Penny Burrell. How is this one? That's that's excellent. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The mesh thing, this is, right? So all music says this is Burrell at his level best as a player to be sure, but also as a composer and a band leader, magnificent. Boom. Yeah, look who's on it. Ron Carter. Billy Hubbard, Hubert, Billy Cobham. Billy Cobham. I mean, yeah, no, Ray Brito. Cool. So let's get arranged it so it's gonna have can, can, can you turn this into editing mode so we can say John Sebesky did his best to screw this record up, but it did more. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's keep going. Oh, here's the Rite of Spring. Yeah, that's... So... This is the first CTI I ever bought. I didn't know what it was. Man, so, Dave got that right there. Yeah. But yeah, this is... I mean, obviously, they're doing Stravinsky, and then they're doing yeah. Bach. Yeah. So he he does Bach a lot. Oh, Brandenburg Concerto. Yeah, you should get this one, Mike. You need wow. To you like this? Yeah, I gotta check this one out. Yeah, that, it's the title already. Still right there for you. Yeah. Well, we'll see. See, you know. You should show that on classical bomb. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe. I mean, that could be like a little mini segment, like a bunch of, like talking about uh, all that. Is it Hubert Laws or what's his Hubert name? Laws, yeah, Hubert Laws. Yeah. Well, he I was a classical we... flute player too. I mean, like. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this is another good Freddie record. It's not the not his best. Uh, this is my I think this is my is this last play. I actually, couldn't get into this one. Can you go it's from what I understand about time. that? It, one of them is sort of leftover shit from his CTI sessions. I don't think this is leftover. I mean, look at the uh, personnel uh, on this. There's a giant yeah, screen that, section. Wouldn't that make it more leftover? No. It's not leftover, dude. I think polar or whatever is the one that's all leftover. Plus, someone told me the story about oh, Freddie Hubbard and CTI. Yeah. They would record everything, and then he would come in and go over it and play his shit. That's correct. Everyone loves to hate CTI, but everyone deep down digs them. Yeah. <laughs> You're not wrong, Karen. All right. We just saw this. This is the Joe yeah. Farrell Outback. That, with El So this is a small group. Yes. So we have Elvin right. Jones, Buster Williams, Chick Corea, and then Air 2. Yeah, that's Anything hot. with Buster Williams is pretty essential. Yeah. Pretty I just cool. found out because I bought that Jack Evans record where they use his real name. Yeah. It's like Charles weird. Williams Jr. Yeah, Paul Rizky's the left over here, right? It's still good, though. <laughs> All right. George Benson, White Rabbit. I think this is the record I see most in a record store. Yeah, it's a weird cover they have there. I don't like that. Yeah. Um it's one of the better ones. Yeah, I agree. I like this one. It's got Herbie on it, Ron Carter, Billy Cobham, Air Two. You know. All the greats. Cool. We got Randy Weston, yeah, Moses. I, I keep not getting that record. Does anyone have it and think it's good? I do, I think it's good. The I've cover's crazy. On it a bunch of times. <clears throat> I see it. I see it in the in the dollar bins quite a bit. I mean, I yeah, you, you got, you got uh, some killers on here, though. I mean, you know, it's an RVG record with Ron Carter, Billy Cobham, fucking Garnett Brown, Freddie Hubbard, Randy Weston. Why do you have to say like fucking Garnett Brown? Because I want to. <laughs> There's only four tracks. It's a jam That's record. Like Twelve minute ones. Looks cool. Look at the cover though. The cover's sweet. It looks like organ, body organs. Oh no, it's someone's face. No, yeah, it's blue what Moses. Blue Moses. Yeah, it's blue Moses. It is a, it is a face. Yeah, I never realized it was a face, even though I have it. It's freaky. The worst one yeah. is the Chet Baker one. I, I could never tell. I knew it was part of a woman's body, but I. Yeah, this one's good. Yeah. So. Wow, Weldon Irvine arranged it. Mm -hmm. Number That's six and amazing. seven. So I guess that's his song. It's a bonus track. Cool. 
Read the names. You said you wanted it. Why are you just skipping it, dude? Come on. Well, this is what a uh, sextet. So Billy Cobham drums, Ron Carter bass, Cornell Dupree guitar, uh, Bob James piano, electric piano, and he ranges, Milt Jackson vibes, and then Stanley Turrentine sax. Really? They sold the shit out of these records. These Stanley Turner. That's why I said. But the label made no money, man. Yeah, that's fair. This is my favorite CTI record. I got that Sky. Or no, I don't have that one. Never mind. Yeah, I like this I, one. A lot, I have dude. it. It's great. I have all the Freddie Hubbards. Me too. Keith Jarrett's on here. Cool cover. Yeah, so CTI isn't in the dollar bin anymore. I usually nope. see them. It's like, in my town. I saw this Freddie Hubbard. Uh, I think they were asking for 20 and they had the, the Stanley Turrentine cherry for 15 that's so true. that's kind of where the price point is that I've seen. I can sense. pull them out of repo in the dollar bin all day long. You should yeah. put them online and sell them, dude. Nah, I don't mess. I don't do that. <laughs> I agree. All right. Jackie and Roy, Time and Love. I never come across those two either. Jackie and Roy. You never seen a Jackie and Roy record ever? Not around <laughs> where I live. No, because they're everywhere. I know who they are. I listen to them. Hey. Song. Since you're an expert on the topic, Chris, yes. have they murdered anyone? No. <laughs> I sure wish they did. Yeah. First yeah. question. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm not really interested in this one. I've got some of the records I never listened to them. All right. We're skipping it. It's not my thing. We got this, this one here. I, I have that one. That's a good record. No. I've heard of him. Okay. Lots Let's see. Folks. How many more do we have? Lot CTI uh, declines. Uh, <laughs> A hundred million. Yeah. Um, like 30. Okay, let's keep going. I have I have that one. No, that it's one I see a ton. That was yeah, a good seller, though, I think. There's 15 copies over across the street here. Oh, we're, we're doing Strauss. Yeah, man. This spoke Sarah Threster. Huh. Who's on this one? I don't remember. Big group. Big group. All the people that play on every single one of them, man. Yeah, pretty much. Damn. Damn, that's a big group. Lots of violins and shit. Yeah. This is not my favorite. But, you know, it's a record I have. Morningstar is good. <laughs> Mark says, yeah. oh, you like CTI? Mm -hmm. Name every CTI you could ever release. We will. We will. <laughs> we will name every single one. This one's good. It's Hubert Laws. Okay. Cool cover. <clears throat> yeah, the, cool Paul, cover. the Paul Desmond CTI records are really good. Yeah, that's true. I have two Paul Desmond CTI records, probably only two he made. Yeah, they're great. Mm -hmm. So, no, I mean, it's, you know, it's the same shit. Another big band of... Yeah. Rob uh, just showed the yeah. next one. Okay, let's see what that is. Oh, yeah. yeah. New Germs. That is an excellent record. Yeah, small group. Four tracks. A little yeah, funky. Good. Yeah. Cool. Herbie. Herbie on the electric. All yeah, the great. all the Joe Farrells are excellent. Yeah, that's true. That one now that one is not in the dollar bin. That one is yeah. that one has gone up in price. That's a twenty five dollar plus record. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. Highly recommended. Okay, now this one people were right when we first started. People were shouting this one out. This is Bill yeah. Jackson's Sunflower. Right. Excellent record. So what do we that. got? It's still a bigger group. Um, yep. Or somewhat big. Yeah, actually, there's a ton of people in here. Um, okay. It's essentially a Freddie Hubbard record. Agreed. <clears throat> do you guys like this one? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. That's Jeffrey's favorite CTI, he said. So there we go. Oh, right. Cheap heat. For sure. This Not is a right. live show. Carnegie Hall, Hubert Laws did. That's some flowers creeping up in price. Not the biggest yeah. band ever, but you know, it's got some vibes going. I want to do after we look at these. I want to. I want to do like everyone's top like three, four, or five CTIs. Like if you but were just here, here's the thing too. The um, they have a sub label, the Kudu. Which yeah, a lot of. It's true. Long, one of the that Ron Carter with Joe Henderson that's on there. 
Grover, yeah. Grover, Grover Washington Jr. was on Kudu. Well, we're not talking about him. <laughs> okay. Why is it that I've never taken Milt to my heart? Am I the only one? You are no, the only I'm not, one. I'm not a big fan of Milt. Oh, my God. Sometimes Milt can sound like a kid got loose in the church and started banging on the church peak church if, stuff. If, if you don't pay me, I'm going to go get biddled. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. You know, a bachelor party. What do you guys think of this comment? It's true. It's people of jazz. Yeah, it is. It is. I don't disagree with that comment. So no. jazz fusion. Too. Well, and if you're coming from funk and soul, well, I mean, to go to yeah. CTI for jazz. I have this one. It's seamless. Hey, can you can you tell us this guy's name, uh, Rob? Gabar Zazbo. There we Gabar Zazbo. Yeah. <laughs> Where is he uh, from? Hungary. He's Hungarian. He yeah. is. This one's fine. It's not my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Have it? yeah. You know, I want to like his right. The for me, he has two greatest oh, yeah. hits records. Yeah. Those are the way. There's a twofer from Impulse. Yeah, there's a single one. Those are the records to get. Agreed. Because I agree with you 100%. I'm not a big fan when they take play modern or at the time. Yes. Yeah, I tried to listen somebody to drew, that somebody drew on the private parts on mine. Oh. <laughs> I tried to, I didn't get into that one either. Oh, I love this record. That's fantastic. Why don't they please reissue that? What's Bob next? Is really good too. Um, is is I don't is what label is this on? You know, he is excellent on the Chico Hamilton records. I will say that. True. True. Oh, this is the Sky label. Not this is his own label. No, that's the label he started with. Um, Sky Mc, Gary McFarland. Yeah, right there. Sky label. Yeah. Even those records have. I just feel he plays like a modern pop song usually, and they come off kind of cheesy to me. Fair enough. Are we giving up? No, we're not giving up. <clears throat> that that <throat> record's not the best. Is this Ron Carter? I yeah. this one. I don't have this one. This is Blues Farm, Ron Carter. Oh, I never see that one. I I, I see that one. Yeah, I've never seen I'll that. Make a decision for myself. Never see that one around here. No. Huh. All right, we have another air two. I see this one a lot. I think that one's yeah. gone up in price a little bit. Fingers. Yeah. I got I got one finger for Chris. Just one, not two. The bird. Just one. <laughs> So right. for me, okay, I'm into that. Yeah. I'd check cool. this out. I'll get this one eventually. That's, I'll pull that one. I might have it, but yeah, like, I got like 40 CTIs. I can't remember Was he ever one. able to wash that red off his hands? No. Exactly. Blood of his enemy. Needle groove. That's a needle groove record, that last I, one. I have that one. Yeah, I don't have this one. <laughs> Every, everyone, you're required to take that, even if you don't have it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's one thing. There's a couple things in life you can count on. One of them is that the his the bin at the record store is always full of records. It said John Faddis was on that one. That's uh Mad Lib's uncle. Yep. Yeah, I have a few John John Faddis records. No Tarantine. All right. I'm messing with T. Big Band, Idris Muhammad, Harold Mayburn, nice. Pepper That's Adams, good. yeah. I have this one. I don't remember what it sounds like though. I haven't listened to it but once. I like Cherry though. Uh, who's this? Don Sebesky's the guy that um, that orchestrated or that arranged a lot of this stuff. His his he's all over, basically. You know, every a bunch of the records. He's the arranger, but. This one, he actually is kind of the lead guy. He's doing Stravinsky on it as well, Firebird. Yeah. I don't have this one. Um, it looks like a very Don Sebesky record with as many people on it, you know? It's just a lot. Super high production, super high arrangement, you know? Yep. All right. Body Talk, George Benson. I see this one a lot. That's good. I have this one. You would have that one. I like it. John Fattis on this one, too. 
Yeah, there's a lot of there's some Mayburn records, you know. All right, Penny Arcade. Yeah, Joe Farrell. Again, you can't go wrong with any of the Joe Farrell records. No, this lineup's insane too. Yeah. Dorothy Hancock, Joe Beck. Good one. Cool. Uh Meh. Yeah. Ram Rambler. That's Small group. Yeah. I'm not really interested. In Damn, yeah. Rolling Stone <laughs> destroyed it. Yeah. yeah look, look at the songs he does. So uh, hard to think about. He ruins the play when he plays like modern pop songs of the time. They're not yeah. good. Hmm. Okay. Uh Freddie Hubbard, keep your soul together. Is this what? leftover stuff too? No. 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 But that's okay. a good album. Junior, Junior Cup. Cook. Nice. George Cables. That looks sweet. That's the only one I don't have. I have it. I want that couch, though. That's cool. <laughs> I'll just lay on it and stream. I love the couch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Ron Carter, All Blues. I, I have that I, one. That's one of the best ones. Yeah. Joe Henderson's yeah. on there. It's good. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I like his impulse stuff. Uh, top five on this one, probably. That's a good one. Joe McPhee Nation Time. I am not. I think I come came across that. Is that a free, is that a free jazz record? Don't get distracted by the peanut gallery. All right, Chris, you do the peanut gallery. I'll do this. All right, Jackson. All right, next one, Milt Jackson with Hubert Law's Goodbye. I have that one. I don't really remember yeah, that's it. Good. That's okay, record. Yeah, I mean, it's got a smaller group. Wait, Cedar Walton's on that, right? I don't know. That's my favorite. Okay, I gotta listen to this again. I need to listen to this one again. Clearly, yeah, the on the track. They do Old Devil Moon. Hmm. Opus Day Funk. Funk. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, Skylark's up next. I got this that is called. Now we're in the Paul Desmond zone. That's one you have, right, Dave? I do, yeah. Nice. Yeah, this one's great. I love Paul Desmond's. Paul Desmond's tone just works with CTI's style, I think, you know? And there's Gabor's a bow. Yep. As a sideman, Rob. He's as bowing it on that record. Yeah, exactly. Jack DeJunet playing drums. That's all the Paul Desmond CTI records are great. Yeah, exactly. This what's was this one though. What's this? Superior Viaduct. Yeah, this has been reissued, I think. Okay. They did it. I, I, don't know. I think so. That's yeah, it's they in. did. It's kind of an odd one that yeah. they did. I we would love to have Bob Brother oh, yeah, yeah. up today. Superior. Yeah, Viaduct. that's a great record, mm -hmm. Rob. I yeah. have that. Same copy. Yeah, superior viaduct. Yeah. Nice. All right, there's another. And who, Jack who knew Roy. he could play piano cool, like Jack that? Roy. Yeah, that's a shitty record. Yeah, <laughs> I'm it. Look, it has vocals on it by Jackie Kane. Who the hell is she? Dude, Jackie, you don't know. Hang on. You don't know who Jackie and Roy are, seriously? Oh, the murderers. No, they were they were super popular. They they've sang together for decades. And Roy, yeah, Roy Powell had a sister that sang only in Vegas. No, dude, no, no, no. They sold records, but I'm not into them. I've got three or four of the records, and that's about two more than I need. All right, we have no entry for this one, so we're skipping. I have that one. It's good. It's a live concert. Uh, another Joe Farrell. Cool. Upon this rock. Mm -hmm. Is that a on the cover? Herb okay. Bushler bass, Joe Beck guitar, Jimmy Madison drums, Steve Gadd drums. That looks like there's a couple different sessions. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's good. Genre crossover jazz. Yeah. Yeah, there's a. Didn't someone play yeah, that? Yeah. that no, Joe Beck kind of has a rock guitar sound at times. So. Okay. Hard bop. Okay. Um. Yep, I have that Bob James one. <laughs> that's easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good. A, uh, that record's sampled the shit out yeah. by... Uh, Wasn't that Bob James uh, too? I can't remember who... No, that one too, all the Bob James. Oh, Go okay. down and look in the... 
Who sampled yeah. it? Oh, yeah. None of us sampled Run DMC. Knowledge, yeah. They sampled the shit out of all Bob James records. Nice. Cool. Um, all right. So next one is a Freddie Hubbard, Stanley Turrentine in concert. Yeah. Oh, I get it. comes in two parts. Yeah. Eric Gale guitar, Ron Carter bass, Jack Dijonet drums. I think Pure Pleasure might have reissued that one. And they just do, they basically just, it, you know. It's great. They did Povo. Povo is one of my favorite fucking songs. This song's great. Well, you seem really very cool. enthusiastic about that. This looks pretty cool. It is. I have it. It's great. Rob, you said you don't like it? No, I I have one part of it because it comes in two parts. Okay. Or I don't know if the pure pleasure is both parts. Hmm. Uh, this one looks really cool. So Stanley Turnkey and Freddie Here's Hubbard, Porter, did they, did they play right. on, other, on, on other CTI records together? Because this is kind of a, a pretty nice... Yeah, I think the ones we've seen. I mean, I think so. Freddie were on those? Okay. I mean, I would, I would bet money on it almost. Well, I'll keep this all together. That's Junior Cook. Um, don't want to smoke the tea. Let's, anyway, we don't have to go back through everything. No, we're going to go through all of them just to see. We don't have to, but you're going to do it. Cherry. See, there's no trumpet on Cherry. Mm. So I think it's kind of cool that the two of the Straight Life, is he on this? Oh, Straight Life, that's the one I have. That's a great one, too. Did we not talk about that already? Yeah, we, we looked at all this. Okay. Anyway, I just think that that's cool that Freddie and Stanley yeah. Turrentine are playing together. That's pretty awesome. In concert. That is in heat. Concert. That record. In, in concert and 20 minute tracks. Yeah. That is that's straight awesome. fire. We, we walked into Carolina Soul and they were playing it. Oh, yeah? Soul, and that the, the copy got purchased by me off the wall. <laughs> they come hard too. So the first. So the well, let me get there. Gibraltar is played seventy three Chicago Opera House over here, and then and then Pavo or Povo was recorded at Ford Auditorium in Detroit. Yeah, and there's a there's a part two that's Kirby Hancock led. Okay, all right, let's keep going. But that one is a necessity. That that one right there. That been so cool. Yes, this yeah. one's dope, dude. This I think was the first one that Bob Bradley showed when he started his CTI series. I think this was the one he. Yeah. I have it right here. Yeah, he did good. He did a good job on that. Series. There it is. That was yeah. Yeah. That was it. That's yeah. freaking great record. Never heard it. And that's volume one or two? Volume one. Yeah. Okay. And that one slays. I'm gonna have to listen to it. Yeah, that give would, that, be, a that would be in my top five CTIs easily. Nice. Cool dude. Is it Van Gelder? It wouldn't be, right? Because yeah, it's Van Gelder. I guess okay. All right, uh, we did Bad Benson. Let's keep going. Milt Jackson. This one's great. I love this one. Linga. Great cover. Yeah. I think I have that. Jimmy Heath. Look at yeah. that. Soprano. Walton, Jimmy Heath, dude. Yeah, this is a great record. Yeah. I've never seen Jimmy Heath play anything outside of tenor, I don't think. Roker's underrated too. Oh, uh, he is underrated. He's great. Ricky Roker. Yeah. yeah. He's a badass drummer. I have that, you know, that's there's that live record. It's him, <clears throat> Sonny Rollins, McCoy Tyner, and Ron Carter. Mm -hmm. That's a kick ass out record. They did a tour somehow and the copy I got was a program from the concert. He's on live at the lighthouse with Lee Morgan. Dude, this guy played with everyone. Yes, very cool. Okay, we don't have entries for the next two. So, okay, well, hang on, hang on. those two are basically greatest hit. Comps yeah, in the previous okay, one. yeah. I've never seen cool. the Stanley Turrentine, but I see the Freddie Hubbard quite Yeah, often. they got yeah. a copy of the Hubbard it tonight. I just put hands on one at the uh, repo. Yeah, hey, if you want to test, test the waters, those are a good way to go. You can get them for cheap, and they're you know, they're cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah. Test the water, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, that's the water. All right, so now we're okay. So now we're going into in concert volume two. So be careful, that's, blood poisoning. Okay, first of all, this cover I feel like might be the worst cover we've seen so far. It's not it's good, pretty awful, but it's also a great record. But so we have Herbie Hancock in addition to Freddie Hubbard and Stanley Turrentine in concert volume two. Mm -hmm. So, what are they doing here? So, 
this is recorded at the Chicago Opera House and the Ford Auditorium again. So same concert uh, or same tour or whatever. Um, so Hornets and Interlude, then Hornets again, then Gibraltar again. again. Interesting. Okay, so two versions of Hornets, basically. I think you just get volume one and, and you know, maybe you're good. Yeah, I really hate this cover. I just don't. Yeah, it's fairly awful. It's colorful yeah. anyway. <laughs> it's just terrible. But so when you buy this record, throw the cover away and just keep the record. Yeah. <laughs> just put that just yeah, put that yeah. record in the sleeve with the with oh. volume one. All right, now click on that. It took me forever to forget that was a woman's eye. I thought it was another body part. Oh, oh. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is Chet Baker. She was too good to me. Yeah, it's a good record. I remember when you found this, Rob, because I don't think we, like, I never seen this, and it was a Chet Baker, so it was just kind of I, interesting. That, I mean, that's a typical. The other record that Chet Baker did for CTI is a harder one to find. The concerto? Yeah. Okay. This one's good. Um, I mean, it's good. It's good. You know, Paul does I mean, music. Band, music on vinyl. The one cut you can find a music on vinyl copy of that. Easy. That's the oh, one available. Hold on. We do have a question here. Who they say who engineered this? It well, it's the same concert, so it's Van Gelder, no? Well, I don't think he was the engineer. He just he cut the record. Who recorded the live gig? That's what. The question is so mm -hmm. let's just see if it says you might here. Have to look on volume one engineer uh, charles bushman charles buchanan uh, buchanan well i can't see it on your tiny screen <laughs> right, who cares let's go back to the list Rudy's mix. yeah all right good now now that you know who engineered it light a candle for him yeah, yeah. Dear God, we're going oh, to go, go back up to the top. Go back up to the top. So these are what other. Th so what's the yeah. sunroom? No, no. Go, go to the top. That Houston Pearson record. Go, go back down. Sunrise live in Michigan. That is a fucking awesome record, and I believe it was done around the same time as Club Mozambique, and the same people are on there. Uh -huh. That's a double record. If you find that record, I think the price has gone up a little on that. Okay. It's a killer ass record. Idris Muhammad on drums. Yeah. Okay. It's a really good record. Mark Grant, 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 oh, wow. Grant Green's on on it. It's good. All right. Let's keep going. Uh Ron Carter, Spanish Blue. Yeah, that ha I have that. It has a couple different covers, I think. No. Well the wasn't his first album called Blue Moses? No, yeah, no Blue Weapon. Blue's Farm? No. This one's okay. I don't know. I have it. I'm not a big fan of it. I, I've passed on it a few times. I don't know. All right. Sugar Man. It's not a good stand. The album was recorded in 71 after a successful debut, Sugar, for CTI, but not released until 75, until he left for Fantasy Records. Big band. Yeah, I don't think enough people are on that record. Blue Mitchell. Curtis Fuller. Yeah. Drummer yeah. Between Curtis Fuller, Blue Mitchell. Oh, that's a great record, man. Wow. Yeah. The, oh, Kenny Burrow. Cool. There's Savuche again from yeah. Brazil. Oh. Hell, I do on anything on this We're record. doing a Michelle Legrand. Well, look harder. Yeah, I agree. The dreams. Ken, for, Ken Funk's great. Yes. I have a test press scene of it. And a white label promo. I don't know it's about that. label promo. Then, right? Cover. <laughs> These covers that's are definitely good. an eye on that one. And again, yeah. That, yeah. that review is stupid. That's a good. That's a funky record. It's a good funky record. Yeah, it is. So yeah, we're getting into '75 now. Um, okay, there's two Jerry Mulligan, Chet Baker's Carnegie Hall Volume yeah, One. I, I have both. That, yeah, those yeah. are good records too. So. Oh. So Mulligan and Chet Baker, obviously, they started together in like the mid '50s on Pacific Jazz. So this is this is probably kind of like a reunion for them. It is. So that's kind of cool. Harvey Mason on drums, nice. John Chet Scofield. Baker sings "There Will Never Be Another You." Yep. John Schofield. This one looks cool. All right. We can and only then... hope that there's never another Chris. 
All right, this is the the polar AC. Yeah, that's, that's polar, the right? that's, it's not polar, polar. That's the leftover record. It's good though. Oh, I like this one. Junior Cook. Yeah, I like this one a lot. It's good. Anyway, yeah, so. turtles. Yep. Yep. Okay. One of the first ones I got too. Bob James two. Yeah, yeah, I got that one. Yeah, go look and see how many samples from that too. Let's Tons. see. Not many. Oh. They don't have them uh, listed the same way as on the first one. Yeah, because really, that uh, one more sampled, I think. Yeah. Okay. And this was just reissued by somebody. Yeah. I, had, I picked up an OG of it. That that has gone up in price, too. No, Ron Carter. Yeah, Ron Carter's on every CPI. <laughs> prices have gone up. Yeah. Well, because those Bob James are heavily sampled records. Right. My takeaway from this overview is we think every record on CTI is good. That's true. <laughs> oh, there's some shitty ones, I can I tell you. There are shitty ones. All right, we have a Hubert Laws. That's a good one. Is it? I'm joking. I, I don't have <laughs> Huh. That's a cool cover, though. It is a cool cover. Interesting. This is a CTI, CTI, CTI record, you know? I like I like that there's like these CTI records where they do classical. I want to check those out. Yeah, you should. This is um, <laughs> I have that, 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 might be, that might be the best one of yeah. the Paul Desmonds. It okay. is. It is. That's a fact. Yeah. Uh, so Paul Desmond Alto, Ed Bickert, electric guitar, Ron Carter bass, nice. Connie K drums. Uh, and I don't know who this is. Ed Bickert. Ed Bickert, mm -hmm. yeah. Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's right. uh, let's take a pour for uh, Ed. Yes. All right, Concerto. Uh, some people say that one's in the day, but that people would say that's the best. Um, one of the best CTIs. Yeah, but I'll tell you this: um, I got rid of my o original OG because the pure pleasure. If you, I also have the CD. If you see there on the side, might go back. A little. Oh, sorry. So on the bottom, the CD. It has a bunch of extra stuff. So yeah. the Pure Pleasure is a double LP, which includes all the CD material. Yeah, I have that. sounds good. And, and the Pure Pleasure one sounds excellent. It's That's really good. good. So My taste is record. Hmm? Well, look, we don't have we don't have to go into that. Yeah, Mike hates this record. Why do you hate it so much, man? What did it do to you? Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. The drums nobody, were recorded too. Cares or or I like or I don't like. Um. Oh, we got Good. Joe Marino. We're just going. We're just going through every CTI title, Joe. This is an interesting one here. It's not. It's not a murder, but a rape. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. That's a yeah. creepy cover. I don't I know. His music here. All right. So this is. I have not Zubesky. seen that one around. I've never Don seen that. Yeah. I no, I've seen that. It's not hard to find. I mean, are any of these hard to find? Really? Not no, really. there are. There are some that are hard, more desirable. I mean, like forty dollars. I, to I find told you now. that uh, other uh, Chet Baker ones are harder to find. <laughs> don't don't tempt us. Well, yeah. Chris and I will sit here all night. Right, <laughs> right, right. Right. Take all. Yeah. Okay, George Benson, Good King Bad. On oh, that one, I see a ton. That yeah. one I just, just got from someone. Good King Bad, that's a good one. I just picked that up for free. Cool. Yeah, it's 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 available. Cool. Red clay is hard to find. Yes. Red clay. Okay. And, 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 and that's been reissued like I more that one. Yeah. It's hard to find. Scroll down and see how much that's been sampled. I got about every Bob James album. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Doesn't have it. Um all right, so this is Bob James three. I didn't I never didn't even know about this one. I'll say one yeah. thing though. Tonally, the Bob James records are kind of all over the place, you know. Yeah. Big group. I've Huge never heard group. this one. I don't know it. There it is. I, I got this. This is a good one. Yeah. Is somebody oh, showing yeah. something? No. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's the red oh. play. Oh, there, there you go. go. That's an original. Cool. Red clay. Cool. Yeah, I've been. I picked up a green label, Red Clay. 
green label. Let's we'll see. Well, let's see. What yeah, I think the green label is the first press. Yeah, because I sold my other one. I found a green label red claw. Oh, uh, well, it's the main. Well, it's a yellow label. Yeah. That's oh, one gosh. I have that one. Um, yellow and green Ron Carter. Um, that's a good album. That's a good album. Kenny, Kenny, Barron. Kenny Barron's on it. This looks cool. Yeah, it does. Don um, Romero. Romero. Rome yeah. yeah, he's awesome. He's got that Pablo record that's worth some bucks. I don't know. that. That's one I never, ever see. I think you might have oh, cool. picked this up recently. Yeah. Can you, can you scroll down? Would, does it have two different covers? Classical music. I don't know. Yeah, this is probably the reissue. Oh, this is volume two. So there's volume one, volume two. Yeah. So is that a live album? Let's see. No, uh, it's recorded at Van Gelder. <clears throat> there's some interesting tunes here. I mean, I've a, never, a, I a, never a, see that record. record. You but see so long. many Herbert Laws records. I never see that one. Cool train. Yeah. Interesting mix. I want to listen to this tomorrow. You have it? Yeah. With okay. that cover? Yes, with that first cover. I think I have both of these, actually. So which one? So I guess there's four tracks. No, that, that's not long enough. So what's yeah. on volume two? Oh, is this just volume two? Uh, this? Maybe. Okay. They don't... don't uh, there's a song by Eric Satie. You see that, Mike? Yeah. No. Hold on. Number three. Yeah. Wow. We were talking about Satie. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool. Very it's a good cool. record. I like it. I mean, Hubert Law's, you know, he's a classical dude. Like, for real. What's this? I had three in my hand last week, but left. I'll grab them next time. Not sure. I don't know. Oh, Bob James 3 he had in his hand. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Velvet Darkness. I never. Don't I don't know. At all. Alan Holdsworth. Yeah. Guitarist, right? Yeah, nice Great one. one a half star record. Guitar, violin, half mm. star. Oh, one and a half. Um, mm. So this one, this one could be a dud. Rob, wait, all the songs are are alternative dates to white. No, no, oh, these yeah. are the nineteen ninety remaster. <clears throat> well, right, we'll let's see what it says. So, for their contemporary jazz master series, this version was completely re okay. Let's just read scroll it. up and read what it, the critical reception is of it. That's just here. I know, no critical just... reception. Yeah. Um, Velvet Darkness, one and a half stars out of five, describing it as an interesting snapshot of young stellar musicians doing their thing in a laid back but energetic fusion funk rock groove. Um, well, he sounds like he's just being a dick, man. I mean, that sounds awesome. Do you see that? Yeah, it's 82. That's also a... He labeled this record as a train wreck disaster and infamous. That's awesome. Yeah. So I kind of want to hear it now. Yeah, <laughs> you a train wreck disaster on yeah, Single Guy? Don't hey, too much for it. Yeah, hold on one second. I'm voting this record as Rev's next obsession. Yeah, <laughs> Rev, yeah. Yeah, Rev, yeah, you, you, Rev, you have to get a copy of this and review it for us. Please. Rob, is this his new Ice Castles? I see yeah. Yeah. You know there what? I'm almost certain. Hold on one second. I'm going to put this out there. I believe that Rev's real name is Alan Oswald. <laughs> Obviously, he says right. he has one of his records and it's terrible. Yeah. Hold on. Rev, can you admit it right here now? That's your real name. No, I think we, we got to be careful, though, because I mean, I've seen a lot of people talk really good things about Alan Holdsworth records, so I don't know. All right, well, hold on. Let's you could suck ass, but I'm just saying. Oh, he's got the. I've got a record of his with. In fact, I think I got a prank phone call from the Rev because he goes, "Hello, this is Alan Holdsworth." <laughs> I owe you. I mean, this is this is killer record right here with with. Him. But you notice how his pictures are not on the album covers. Tony Williams. Oh, Tony Williams. Live at the Village oh. Gate. This is killer. I got this from Jazz Record Center in New York. Yes, nice. but it has that sticker on it. Is that a full-fledged copy oh it's whatever i'm sure it's it's whatever the old man sent me 
because I had to I had to call him and talk to him on the phone because he's the only place he's the only place that had that. Oh wow! When I tried to get a copy, so I don't I don't think I talked to Ken. Ken wasn't there. It wasn't a Saturday. All right, we have two more in the six thousand series. It costs extra to talk to Ken. <laughs> oh, this is great! Yeah, extra shipping and handling. Yeah, I just picked up a mint cop. I have a so so copy of it. Yeah, and I just picked up a minty copy of it. I think I have two so so copies of it. That's yeah, a great, great cover. I love that's that cover. cover. Yeah, I've never heard that at all. And that's when their bus broke down in the snow. Oh. I, I want to make, make this a, a Friday night stream cover. Dude, please do. It's great. Yeah. Might yeah. be tough to get up. How that is you know, here. Now, I, from what I understand, one of them had to eat the other one to survive. Yeah. Who's on this one? Oh, oh sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. We have Benson guitar, Farrell flute, bass flute, soprano sax. And then a bunch of additional musicians. Steve Kahn, Eric yeah. Gale. Eric Gale. Yeah. That's a good record, though. Cool. <laughs> what? All right. And the yeah. last one, which has a weird catalog number here. But I guess it's not weird. There's other ones with this. I don't, I don't know what there's, this is. Those little live ones, I think. Maybe. Well, maybe not. Oh, yeah, perhaps. Uh, George Benson in concert. What is it? Carnegie mm -hmm. Hall? Carnegie Hall. Uh, yeah, that one I see quite a bit. He that, wrote Ronnie, Ronnie Foster. Ronnie Foster? Damn. That's cool. Love Ronnie Foster. So they're doing Skydive. Summertime Take 5. Oh, Skydive. Shit. <laughs> That's only on the CD, though. Damn it. I don't want to buy the CD. Oh, it's only on the CD. Yeah. What so about that, those are the 6,000 series. Yeah, it's all over there. We'll scroll, so down many, this more, scroll down this a little bit more real quick. That's 6,000. Okay. We can cover this real quick, okay? They only oh, had two okay. troopers. Only right, two troopers? Two troopers. Two and, oh, that's weird. He saw that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and then you have all stars. This is like, a yeah, the California concert. Yeah. I think there's, yeah, there's a couple. It's good. There. I have that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I don't remember what these are. I think they're uh, popular music. Okay. So whatever. And then... This is a continuation of the six thousand series because so it's more records. Okay. You don't have to go through them. Though. I'm just saying that they did. These are more, and the eight thousand series is what you have to watch out for. I'm saying you right, said well, Latif. We don't. Oh What's wait. That? Okay, I'll yeah. tell you this. The, okay. Those, Yusef Latif, and Art Farmer, they kind of did a rec. They're each record together. Those are horrible records. Yeah, I open that up. Something you got seventy eighty. That you said Latif Apocalypse. That's a horrible record. <laughs> fucking horrible. terrible record, dude. All horrible. Fair enough. <laughs> that record bad. should be burned at the stake. I love yeah, San Diego. I never find that one. one. No <laughs> this is a great song. Yeah, that record actually Weird. sounds like poo -poo. Yeah, Four stars my ass, dude. Whoever wrote yeah. that. Yeah. Nothing was started. Now. Now. I got the entire, everything he's ever done right behind me. Okay. Yeah. Horrible record. Um, if you look closely at Art Farmer's face, he's going, why the fuck did I make this record? All right. Well, we have Art Farmer Crawl Space mm, that he's that's, doing. That's not much better. Okay. You don't know that. It's got George Mraz on. It's got to be good. <laughs> it isn't. Um, there's this use of one here. It could be stuck in someone's crawl space. This Wait, one no, this I love, one it's not I love Yusuf Latif. That is a horrible record. I don't know yeah, about the art farmer I one. I was thinking once. of uh, it's the same thing, art farmer. Yeah, yeah. it's not good, like man. This. Not a good combo for me. No, All that right. record sucks. Okay. Totally, dude, sucks. <laughs> so bad. Oh, I see this one all the time. That one's good. Oh. That one's really good. I think uh, uh, your pleasure put that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, really, this, really this one, one looks really cool. They did it. At, I think Ord did it at forty-five. Yeah, and. Yeah. and Rob, don't uh, not Rob. Uh, Chris, don't you have another art? Oh no, I'm thinking of Ron Carter, Jim Hall. Oh god, that record's a killer. Yeah, better than all this shit. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's a Nina Simone, Baltimore. Yeah, with the "Follow Me Please" is reassuring that. That's got to be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, maybe not. I only got two stars. Chuck Israel's. Yeah. That's cool. From yeah. From Bill Evans. Uh, what else? 
There's another Yusuf in a temple garden. I've never, never seen that one. I don't know. Yeah, I never seen that one. Um, Randy Brecker, Brecker brothers, no Brecker. Point. It's probably just as crappy as the other ones. Yeah, I can't. I can't do the Breckers. <clears throat> Patty Austin. All right. So that you know, we're not going to go into every one, but there's those. Okay. Um, then finally, the eight thousand series. If you, these are fine. The difference is the older CTIs, they all have really nice gatefold covers. You know, yeah. they're, they're like a fucking tone poet. Basically, they use right? the same plates as the other ones. Like I've yeah, the eight thousands mostly are these are all reissues. Yeah. And a lot of the times they'll fucking rename them and even switch out the artist names to trick you. So but you gotta really it. look when you're go buying an eight thousand series to make sure you don't already have it. Yeah, but I believe that's when the other Chet Baker record came out on this. So scroll down. Okay, that would be true. See if there's any that aren't reissues. Oh yeah. Hold on. Let me oh, look at those unissued. Un yeah, they never re they never used them. That's what it means. They're all reissued. Oh, they're just blank catalog numbers. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Yeah, so anyway, a lot of reissues. If if you the eight thousand series sound good, they're in cheaper covers. So I mean, you know, if you can buy them, but I tend not to buy the eight thousand just because I want the original. You know, gatefolds and all that. Okay. There's there's that. Right. So that uh, studio trusse. Oh, I have that. Yeah. I open got, that one I up. Sold it to you. I'm gonna open that one up. I'll listen to that. This is actually really good. Yeah, it's good. That's so this is Chet Baker with guitarist Jim Hall and uh, flutist Hubert Laws. Yeah, it's one. Of, that's one of the not hot, easier ones. You can't. It's harder to find that one. Yeah, it's like Kenny Barron. Yeah. But I found that three times. It's good. Ewan Tchaikovsky, Swan Lake, Miles Davis, all blues. So this is how we get Mike sucked into CTI. I'll check it oh, out. I mean, I may not really like it. I don't know. Right. I'll have to give it a listen. I also have the CD of it. And then Kudu is cool. The we have Kudu. Kudu. There's so a what there's is Kudu? a grand, there's a Grant Green Kudu that's good. How did, but what is Kudu like? How does Kudu? Kudu's 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 it's more kind of. Soul jazz, funky stuff, funky stuff. Yeah, because this was this was a uh, like a sub label or whatever you want to call it. Right. I thought that Kudu came after CTI, but it looks like yeah. it was it was done at the same time as right. the yeah, simultaneous. Yeah. Simultaneous. Yeah. Sister label. Okay. Well, I open a couple of them and look now, at the what what makes a record for Kudu versus CTI? Is there any I, reason? Did you just not listen to what I said? They're more no. like soul jazz, funkier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, power power like, and, you, like I've sold the Idris Muhammad ones are mm -hmm. expensive records. Yeah. That, but that Grover, right there, yeah. So the, that, that one is a hundred dollar record. Right? That, yeah, yeah, it's not a hundred dollar record, but no, it's like expensive. seventy. Yeah, it oh, used to be one. a lot cheaper, but not anymore. No. We're looking it up now. Buy me a copy. I, I just sold one in my last auction. Damn you! You're supposed to sell it to me. Let's see, US. Yeah, look at the originals. So, originals G plus, bro. Come on, G plus. Go to the sales history. Don't look. Yeah, what G plus. Plus. Those, those, those are That's imaginary numbers that, that people put up. Just, All right, okay, okay, okay. Go look for how much it sold for. They're not imaginary numbers, but they're the cheapest you can get them for right now. I mean, it's just what the number is no, right I now. I understand yeah. it, but. Go look for what all right. So for VG plus, we're looking 55, 70, 70, 70, 70, 75, 120 pounds. Yeah, Whew. so it's a pricey record. Yeah, it's a funky record. I think he has like three or four, and their records are expensive. That yeah. came out with two different covers, too. There's a black cover. Yeah, you can get you can get a cheaper ratio of that, but oh look, all music is five stars. Yeah, I I I can't get into him. Yeah, me neither. And it's a kudu, like, right? Yeah, yeah. another artist yeah. I've never heard. Actually. Open up, open up that Johnny Hammond, that first one. I, I know I want to talk about a few of these. So he had a bunch, he had a few records on here, super soul jazzy, you know, funky yeah. uh, organ stuff. Um, Grover Washington and Hank Cropper are on almost all the Cootie records. I mean, they're all over the place. So they were they were kind of you know the foundation of that that label. <clears throat> And the Billy Cobham just played drums on everything. Um, so that's one. And then open up like any one of those Hank Crawfords. 
Do y'all know Hank Crawford? I used to have this one. That's a cool cover. I don't know if he gets any kind of respect at all. Well, I just, it's just, I don't know. It, it's, yeah. yeah. He does it. Oh, yeah. I have one. I have that one Atlantic, record on Atlantic. Do, milestone. He's recorded a lot. He's a, he's a great player. Yeah, no, his his style is not my thing. Shit, look at a milestone. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any of his records. It's not my thing either. He's more of a. He's, he's in the Grover know. Washington Jr. category. I love Grover, though, man. All right. Yeah, All right. yeah, that's true. He he sold us. I mean, he's more smooth. He's super this, smooth. This is his first album. Well, I have the one. I guess you get on Atlantic is blue something. Hold on. Uh, true blue. True blue. Where's true that? Blue. There it is. Sixty-four. Where's true blue. This Not one. Well, I would, I would I wouldn't mind getting some of his older stuff. That'd be cool. well. I had a I had a no, no not, not that one. Go back to his records. Again. I had an Atlantic that I just didn't like, so I just got kind of turned off. I had that one, and and it was okay, but I just like eh. Well, Keep going blue. down. Hank Orchestra. Yeah, not that one. It has a blue cover. Go down, Mister. Look at Mr. that. Blues. No, not that one. I, I can't Mr. get into Hank. Mister Blues. Yeah, that one. I have that one. From what okay. I thought, that's the one people say you should get. But I mean, he's he's kind of lightweight. Rubber Washington is under. Yeah, he's kind of lightweight. lightweight. Well, then go out and buy his albums, man. Yeah, well, I'm man. not just because I don't like him. I'm not. Hey, gonna everyone, Jasper Mike is a Hank is gonna do a <laughs> Hank Crawford deep dive video by himself. <laughs> but look, cool. you got Johnny Hammond, you got Hank. You got Grover Washington and, you know, Peter Smith. I know your Grover there. Washington and Hank Crawford records to Jazz Bob Mike. You know, I okay. mean, just look how many there are. There's so many Grover Washington and Hank Crawford oh, yeah. records. Green. How about this yeah, one? No, I have that. That's a good record. I have it. Yeah. That's cool. But That's everyone's cool. on it. Look, everybody's on that record. Yeah. Wow. Record. All right. Okay. Look. Um, yeah, same shit. Same shit. But, but, but again, I'm what telling you, this? all those uh, Idris Muhammad yeah. records go for some dough, man. They have a they gospel have... label. Yeah. Oh no, <laughs> a Gazar Zazbo <laughs> record called Macho. Johnny Hammond, Gambler's Life. Mm. You're the devil there. Yeah. yeah. This one looks sweet. Henry Franklin, nice. The Mazel Brothers. That's gonna be funky as hell. Yeah. Totally. So. All right. Um, and then Look what is the macho. three Look brothers? The New York three jazz, brothers. Hang on, that New York jazz quartet. I don't know why it doesn't show it. That, that's a good record. Yeah, so I, I have. I have. That. Yeah. So do you know? Do you know who Lou Christie is? No. He's the like one who sang the song. Oh, yeah. He had one song. He sang it for like what? thirty years. Lightning strikes. Yeah, lightning strikes. <laughs> Tell me something, baby. You gotta understand. All right. Well, baby I think that's it, guys. Boom. So, just a quick recap. There's this Three Brothers label, which is short-lived, named after Creed Tower's son. It had a few singles, and they released one album by Lou yeah, Christie. Can you, can you click on Macho, please? Okay. That record's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> So, um, Salvation, which is the go uh, gospel albums, Kudu, which is more funk uh, forward albums. We have then like the 9,000, 8,000, 6,000, 7,000 series. And then the thing we kind of jumped over was this 1,000 and 3,000. Is there anything noteworthy in 1,000 that you want to click into? Paul Desmond. But those are those are A um, and M ones. Yeah. Those all tied. The Antonio Carlos Jabam ones are good. Those are Wave and Tide. Yeah, yeah, those I have Wave. All, those were all when they moved when they started with A and M. So those yeah. are typically all have A and M labels on them. Yes. Okay. The other yeah, side well, of Abbey Road. Really that, right? That's a good record. I have a copy of that in the. Sealed copy reissued by Friday at my auction tomorrow. Oh, look at this. Very cool. It, it's a good record. Quincy Jones. Cool. Cool. 
All right. Well, what else do we got going on here? Um, found in 67. Yeah, I think we kind of hit on everything. Job, um, Beam. And Sazbo's. <laughs> Where did Chris go? All right. Now that we're out of wiki you land. Crisco? You shouldn't use Crisco. All right, Mike. So what's the top yeah. ones on your list now to get? What? What are the top ones on your list to get? Oh, yeah. So... No, I, I, that's just a general question. Like, if he's you were buying, to, he's not buying records now. He thought he would. I'm not well, but if you were to recommend, um, maybe four, like yeah. three, three, red, four, five. Red, however, red, red, red clay. Okay. You don't like the Jim Hall record, so I can't recommend. Red, don't do not for me. I mean, I'm talking. Just well, generally. I mean, the I think everyone should get all the Joe Farrell records. That they're just so good. They're all kind of different enough. But if, but if you had to get four, you get Red Clay, you get the Chet Baker one, you get Concerto, the um, Jim Hall one, Concerto, and yeah. you get um, that volume it's, one. It's Skylark, the Paul Desmond Skylark yeah. one. And what about uh, that volume one? You gotta get volume one with the Herbie and Freddie Hubbard. And well, I'm gonna listen to that, but I, I'll, you know what? I'm gonna tell you, this is the best. And it comes, you can get it because it's so many different ones. This, this, and this is the same record. This is almost like it's an ECM record. This is the best CTI record, in my opinion. But they come in, I don't understand why they did it this way. I think this one's cooler cover. And I'm probably going to get rid of this because I have a green one, but. This is such a good record, but all uh, these, all the Joe Farrells are good. Chris mind. from WCB is saying all the Hubbard stuff. Yeah, all the Hubbard, but um, yes. all the Joe Farrells. I would say, as someone who doesn't really collect CTI, the ones that it seems like they're the top ones are that Milt Jackson Sunflower. That's the, very good. Freddie Hubbard Red Clay, the Jim Hall Concerto. Uh, the Joe Beam, either Wave or Stone Stone Flowers. But yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're good. Well, actually, there's one of the Joe Beam that goes for a shitload of money. Stone okay. Flowers. Yeah. So Even Stone... every time it's been reissued, like uh, Org did it at 45. Yeah. That's a $200 record. And then I guess you got to go with, I mean, well, Freddie Hubbard's Red Clay. So you check that box. The Joe Farrell. What would be the one Joe Farrell if you I had to just, pick one? What, do you not pay attention when words come out of my mouth? Is that's the one you would recommend out of all of them? Yes. Okay. Even, it's my favorite yeah. CTI record because it's not a CTI record. It's like an ECM record. Okay. It's very avant-garde-ish. And then who? Oh, and then Stanley Turrentine Sugar. I have it's that skateboard good. park. Uh, we're just, just going through. Them. We're going through like the top ones people should get for. You know what? Uh, the Kenny Burrell is really good. Yeah. Just the... want to pull out forty of them and look at them all. What's yeah. that? So I can pull out like forty of them and we can just look at the covers. Yeah, yeah. Pull and them out. We're, drag we're dragging <laughs> this out so it's like no. it's like a death rattle right now. It's fucking great! That's how we. That, how do you think we make like four hour, five hour streams with this kind of bullshit? Like, let's go <laughs> well, through yeah, an entire just catalog. Just what else are we gonna fucking do? Oh, hold on. You're supposed to get drunk or high. We all I'm leave, high. and you bring up inappropriate people on the stream. That's fair. <laughs> What's that, Rob? I wasn't paying attention to what you were saying. <laughs> I said blah, 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 blah. This is I got a lot going on over here. I got the chat. I got the, is, the web browser. Oh, yeah. So I, that yeah. is one I really... I'm gonna oh. listen. I'm going to listen to it after I leave here. This, this, oh. is, this is absolutely scorching. Okay. Right. You know yeah. there there is one that didn't come up. There is one where um, what they uh, what's his face Creed Taylor, Taylor had this idea of doing this gigantic concert in L.A. and there are these it's like CTI at the Ho in Hollywood, and they've released it in several different ways. That that one never came up in any of the things you showed. Hmm. So Rick says his favorite ECM. So I think maybe next I'm week. I'm trying we'll to change the subject, Rick. We're we staying here on CTI. We for every ECM title next. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Okay. What do we got? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's oh, probably the a &M. That's the first one. 
Can you reenact that cover? What is no? <laughs> That's the first one I have. Then I have this one that you scan. Yeah, that on. that one you see all the well, time. we didn't. That was part of the three thousand series. So oh, yeah. the California <laughs> concert. The A and M. This one's good. Road song. What's Montgomery? I all the yeah, they're still vervy. Yeah, I like the vervy ones too. But yeah, these have the like A and M labels, right? Like right, yeah. that's the ones we yeah. Oh, this is a good one. We didn't say this one. Paul Desmond, summertime. Yeah, and he There's, also has uh, one where he does bridge over troubled water. Well, I forget the name of that one. Here's the that Benson um, Beyond the Blue Horizon. This is a green label. Ooh. Great, oh, nice, great cover. Then you also had um, so this one's weird. This one's like shiny. It's another Nat Adderley calling out loud. Oh, good record. Cool. And this one had like a kind of a brown A and M uh, label on it. Those are those are good sounding record. The the brown yeah. label. That's Cannonball Cannonball Adderley's brother, right? Yes. And then here's the first six thousand. What, gave, what gave that away to you, Dave? <laughs> Dumb question. Here's that Freddie Hubbard yeah, straight yeah. live. We just pulled yeah. that one. That's underrated record, I think. Hyper classic. I just picked that up, but I haven't listened to it yet. Is it Stanley Tarantino. You're not even it's, looking, Mike. Yeah. I see your eyes. <laughs> I'm looking they're at that Matt Adderley they're, one. They're glazing they're over. Oh, right, hang on. I'll get some more. All right. Well, I'll share this while you get yeah, it. You, you show yeah. Nat Adderley meets the rhythm section. This is the Nat, this is the Nat Adderley with the shiny cover. Um, what are two they doing? Star. Two stars. Yeah. Two stars. Two stars. Oh, no. Okay. Look at that. Really? Four and a half. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. In your face, yeah. Rob. <laughs> uh, they're doing a bunch of different stuff here. Um, oh, so you got Nat Adderley on cornet, uh, Paul Ingram, French horn, Sullivan Powell, sax, Jerome Richardson, sax, Jerry <clears throat> Dodgian, sax. So they got a huge sax section. They got a bassoon on there. That's the mic, no sax. It's good. All right, another pile. All right, I'm next. The Huber Laws, Red Spring. Did you get any of these mm -hmm. from that ladies' collection? Oh, yeah. Probably six or seven of them at least. Mike, you need that one. Cherry. The right, right. Spring. Now, Cherry yeah. has two different covers, right? Yeah, well, there's a 6,000 and an 8,000 version, yeah. Um, oh, there's my favorite, yeah. It's got a it's great, pretty Hubbard. There's that Deodato or whatever. I think this stream will be the stream that doesn't die. It will. I could leave for two hours and it'll still be showing CTI. <laughs> here's, right. the, here's the Hubert Laws Morning Star. He's good to show him, so I am. So that, that's an awesome mm -hmm. record. That's very ECME, too. This one I got for eight bucks. It's the Hubert Laws Carnegie Hall. Yes. That's a big surprise you paid that much for it. Yeah, whatever. There's your Gab Gabor. What is his name? Gabor Sasbo. Right, Mike, come back. I'm here. I'm showing He's throwing up right now because of the records you're showing. There's a <laughs> George Benson. This is good. Yep. Yeah. Here These are all the records we just looked at. I know. Yeah. I He's have got, one. got everything. Yeah. He's very proud of his CGI. <laughs> Yeah, now that's the we one. We I never saw that one. Can you hold it back up again? Yeah. All right. Look at something else. I got, I got, I'll get the last pile. All right. I'll show my. I have three CTI records. Uh, are, did you? If are we going to move on to the deep dive of Kenny G's uh, collection? So I have this. Re, this is a speaker's corner reissue. I've shown this multiple times. This is the uh, Hubert Laws. Um, why, why pay all that money for the speaker's corner when you can find that for like five bucks? I don't know. I, honestly, I have no clue what I was thinking when I bought this. Um, so I got my copy for five bucks, but it was it sealed. Great, right? it was sealed. What's that? It sounds great, right? It does. It sounds really good. But the, the original is Van, Van Gelder. I mean, I'm sure the original probably yeah. sounds. It, it's yeah. probably not much difference. If, if you I, could get it and have both. There's never there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. And then I do have a uh, red clay. Ah, yeah. Mine is this label. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same as mine. Yeah. So you left the receipts in there. Oh, yeah, so how much did I pay for this? Fuck's sake. 
find out. Um, I think I paid twenty bucks. That's so, a good price. Good price. That's over a fifty dollar record. Yeah, and then uh, and then uh, Felipe sent me this. This is Joe Beam Wave. The yeah. Now, now here's what I don't understand. Good one. That to me. I have the and green. There's Gilbert. one like that, and uh, there's one with the green cover. Instead yeah, that's right. Uh, we can take a look at the discogs, but when Felipe sent me this, he he messaged me. He's like, I found a Canadian CTI, but it's Van Gelder. Do you want it? And I was like, Yeah. So he sent it to me. But and... there, there, there are Van Gelder. That's how he mastered it. Yeah, I know, but it just I, I don't know why he said this is Canadian. Like this Maybe he sent you the wrong copy. Looks it, like a US. Yeah. <laughs> Can you smell it? Because if it smells like back bacon, then it's Canadian. But I did, hold on, let's look up. Yeah, let me share my screen. Oh no, this deep diving's getting out of control. You're saying Rachel smells like back bacon? No, okay, you so, think she does. So this is the copy I think it is. This is how I matched it, and it's a US 67. That's the copy I have. But Rob, to your point, I want to look at the different colored well, covers. My green cover does not have Van Gelder in the dead wax. Okay, so hold on. So maybe you just wanted to surprise you, Mike. Let's do he likes you, Mike. Well, I, I used to have the Jim Hall concerto, and I sent it to him. And, yeah, so here's the green. Yeah. Um, so, so this is also 57. Can you click on it? Because, like, mine doesn't have Gang Gelder in the dead box. Mm. I think maybe I have a later this one. This doesn't have the... Um, Hold on. There's another one here. But I think I have a late. It, they put out that green label maybe a little later, too. doesn't say. It says it was Preston 67. Wait, wait, what does that say? Digital transfers? Go, go on. Track listing time is approximately based on digital transfers of pressing. An original U.S. pressing with green cover and tan label. Nice. My, I don't know where my copy well, is. I don't think like I have tan labels. I like to look at the cons. Let's see. First time listening to an LP, it sounds like grocery shopping yep. music. Oh. Uh, Ding, 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 I was ding, shocked ding. by the quality of this pressing. Anyway, well, lots so, of comments. Can we do this on every one of the pressings for all the CTI records? Oh, no. well, that is, that, that's all the wave pressings. Hey, yeah, you know what? Good. Listen, Chris, when I did go to hell and I am oh, going to hell, that'll be my hell. Yes. There are many with no RVG. So we only have this many okay. left. Felipe, does that mean they no still are RPG? Felipe, you gotta give us a minute. You posted you posted that comment a minute ago. Yeah, it's settle down. <laughs> settle down, buddy. Hey, oh, the store claims it's Canadian. Okay. All right. Well, the store claims. But Felipe, does uh I mean it's still uh sounds Felipe. like my kind of store. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. good collection, Chris. You get good deals. Right, here we go. Bill Jackson Olingo. Maybe let's all that. Can you, a you, Carter record. Could, could you just sell them a little better than this? No, we already talked about. It. I'm just showing the covers. There's the other Stanley Turn team we saw. You got them all. Is this the is this the whole discography? No, I'm missing about 15 or 20. Uh, he, uh, Dave, mm -hmm. this is how Chris yeah. writes off his records. He has to show them. Yeah, exactly. Here's the 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 Mulligan Baker. Yeah, that, that, that is excellent. Those I have. Those are excellent. And this one is funny. This is the second one. This was proper property of Trajan at some point. Wow. He put his name all over the cover, dude. Well, like the you know, Tra Tra do you know Trajan? No, I do not. Well, I do know Trajan. Mike, come back. I'm almost done. Where? I said, could you break into Chris's house and write your name all over his record? It's all right, see. Oh, shit. There's the Desmond. Nice. Yeah, Desmond. but that's. That's excellent too, but the Skylark one is my favorite of them. No, I don't think I have a Skylark one. What is this? Oh, here's the uh, pure pleasure. Pleasure. That's good. Yeah. Right. Um, there's That's that one. George. Yeah, I just picked that up for free. There's the other Hubert Laws. Mm, saw that. Look at that, look at that cover, Mike. That's not a classical cover. Yeah, people jumping through the sky. Yeah. Ballet. Yeah. <clears throat> people jumping through the sky. Oh, I paid six bucks for this next one. Boom. It's uh Eddie, it's Cam Funk. You'd like it. Yeah, Cam Funk's great. Eighteen dollars. Oh yeah, I got fucked on this yeah, one. That, yeah, that's a shitty today. record. Throw that in the trash. I'm gonna put it in the auction. 
What is this? Oh, yeah. So is that a good one? Yeah, it's the org, the org 45. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, then this one, oh, God. Almost done. This one's oh, on a record for day release. Yeah, I have that one. I think they did. I think they did uh, two or three records for them. The original yeah. of that is not cheap. Herbie Hancock's mm -hmm. on it. And this is an eight thousand series. I also, I think I have. No, well, I guess. It's a great it. cover. Um, yeah, this is the eight thousand series though. And then this one. This is that Hebrew Laws, the other one that we that we saw. Right. Mike, look at this cover. Oh, Fantastic. Sorry. Yeah, that is a cool cover. And then this is the one that I got from Rob, the last yeah. the nine thousand series, and then I only have one kid right now. It's the John, first Johnny Ham. That's, it. Nice. that's quite a stat. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I started buying CTI records when I first started buying jazz records. I picked up a lot of them. Yeah, I just I did the same thing with blue notes. I grabbed as many blue notes as I could like six, seven years ago. I can go through my blue notes. I'm just kidding. Hey, but none of you guys have the Irby Green one. No. No, I never found that. Did it even uh, come up? Yeah, we looked at that. that that's part of the 8000 series, right? Great photos that? in that album. Really good. What, what's the catalog number on that? 770. 7070. Seven, okay. Oh, yeah. That's the Fox. It's this one here. Yeah. There's a one You're coming in a lot clearer tonight, Rob. I didn't even, oh, because I, uh, I hooked up a router to my thing, which has a built in router. Yeah. So I think that sent the signal better. So that's why I'm good. Yeah, I had trouble. I was trying to use my phone the other times I was on here, and I was getting that some crazy feedback. So I switched to this laptop. So this laptop's like way better. Yeah, laptop's better for sure. Now look at, look at this comment from Mark. He's clearly sliding CTI with this. Yeah. I mean, I got some Chuck Mangione records. Shit. Yeah, screw you. Well, I have a two right for. Back up. I just picked up a two for of Chuck Mangione. And you know what, Mark Glassman? You should take Chuck Mangione's biggest hit to heart and feel so good. <laughs> I feel so bad. I have a bunch of Chuck albums, too. I bet you do. <laughs> They're pretty common, I know. Yeah. They're pretty common everywhere. He was a popular guy. Oh, I can't find them. See, Chris has been challenged. No, I can't find them. I only found one. Oh, well, that, that's good enough. All right, fuck it. Let's see it. It's great. I've got more. I just don't know where they're at. Oh, um, someone asked a question. Can we highlight Rick's right here? He's the first one to notice. What? My moniker is called His Orchestra. What's this about, Rob? Mike, would you like to, to yeah. say that? What? I'm not even following Mike? this. Mike, you don't know what this is about. My well, name well, on the well, stream is his orchestra. Oh, it's notes and tones. Oh, because he's not here. Mike purposely kept me out matter. of the thumbnail and put notes and tones. Who hasn't been here all night? He said yeah. notes and tones and he's his busy orchestra. man. He is busy man. He's out on the street. Oh, there you go. Sure. Boom. That feels so good. good. Yes. Yeah. Can you send yeah. that copy to Mark Lassman for me? Please? Yeah. <laughs> same Thanks same kind of uh, label. Mark says that yeah. he's been listening. He's been listening to that since uh, grade four. Well, Mark, that. again, it's the fourth grade. Screw your Canadian way of pronouncing. It's like I love this song. I know it's a cliche song, and it, it was a big crossover hit, and they like played it with like go pro golf. Dude, it never ended. And shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the only song in the history of pop music. Yeah, that the Muzak version is actually the song. Yeah, hundred percent. Also, you can probably, you can definitely hear it in every Red Lobster for about twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't have to license that song to Muzak. They just gave I love it the song. Though, so I'll show it's this one just to cleanse the palate. Finding these are hard to you know these are kind of hard to find. Yeah, we need, hold on I mean, a palate cleanser. There you go. We're cleansing the palate here. Yeah. Hey, y'all asked. I'll get into my ESP disc stuff. So. Yeah, that'd be all right. 
Broski. Were you joking? <laughs> oh, you, you want to see? I mean, there's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How, I like Breakfast King's comment. <laughs> how many ESP discs do you have, titles do you have? Oh, good lord! There's what fifty or sixty here. Oh, Holy man. shit! Well, you, you don't have to show show them all, but if you want to show a few, that'd be cool. Well, yeah. I mean, here's uh, this one's pretty rare. This is the first one, Nikantu and Esperanto. Oh yeah, yeah. That's original of hey, the first. Am, am I wrong about this? Probably. It's, I know there's a Strata East. They're planning to do a big reissue campaign. Yeah. Did someone say something about <laughs> ESP? I haven't I heard they, anything. I know they currently mm -hmm. are pressing records from in bad pressing plans with an unknown source. Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't get into those. Wait, Rob, what did you say about Strata East? They're going to do a reissue. I didn't. There hear was that. a. Uh, Instagram post to buy Strata East mm -hmm. okay. saying that get ready or something like well, that. Well, interesting. I'm, I'm already good with. Yeah, I'm. I want that record. That's one record I really would like. This yeah, this belonged to a Duke professor who sold her collection to Carolina Soul years ago. Um, and when I spoke to the owner of Carolina Soul that day, he said it was the greatest free jazz collection he's ever seen, and they. Hmm. You know, they do their eBay stuff separate from the shop. Mm -hmm. the eBay stuff is all consignment collections. This collection went in the shop. That mm. morning, I got there about an hour after they opened the Japanese duo, who I'm sure you guys have heard about, that go from shop to shop in the U.S., crushed the place, <laughs> dropped 8000 in cash right before I walked in. Damn. And this was one of the only two pieces left of that collection. This one in the Noah Howard I just showed, I got that day. Wow. These belong to Miss Kalau, who's a professor at Duke. Cool. That's awesome. She lives, there lives right in New York there. City, and she had, I guess, it's the sickest free jazz collection. But not, not, not Farrow Sanders. That's his first album, I think. Yeah. Yes. It's it's not that. No, free. yeah. It's very, yeah, it's very tame. Yeah. New York Art Quartet. Oh, John cool. Takai. It's one of my favorite players. I've never seen that one. That one, I, that one I got from Alex. Hey, hey, don't get too big for your britches, Mark Glassman. We can oh, go. Here back. we go. The, uh, oh, I just one. I recently got the original that. cover. There's yep. two covers of this. Yeah, that's the art cover. Mark, if you want to come up uh, and show some ESP, I, I, you know, Dave, I have two uh, samplers. That's and then I have what? a milk. Graves. That could this be a pretty one, pricey record, this, right? This one I got uh, at Repo for twelve dollars. Um, when twenty years ago? No, yeah, it was like six, seven years ago. Yeah. He he, this he doesn't care about free jazz stuff. He just he prices used to get out of his way, really. Um, Paul Blay. This oh, has yeah, a black cover as well. I've heard it. Yeah. But there's also the one with his just his head on it, right? Yeah, I have it. Yeah. That is one's cheaper. Like, Hold on. What's well, that's that? a really Bob James one, isn't it? Yeah. Now, what does one, that Bob um, James sound like? In sixties. Oh, this yeah. one's this one's very avant. It is. Yeah. This is a hard find. Let's see, we got uh, those bells. Yeah. This one is the purple. I'll show you the. Discs I actually do this. see. I do see that one sometimes. Yeah. This one has a lot of different. It. it uh, versions. Yeah, the purple. Hmm. What? When did that come out? I forget. Okay. Sixty. I don't know if is it. Is there even a sixty-five? Okay. On bells, the Eilers. I didn't realize the single side had that graphic on it. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. And then Giuseppe Logan, original. Hey, that's nice. a sweet cover. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, this one, uh, this is a Japanese pressing of the Miller yeah. Goods. I actually, that I have an OG of that. <clears throat> you do? Yeah. Are you? Do you like it? Yes. Okay. I, I, I'll, trade you, I'll trade you that for the Ferris Sanders, though. Ah, no, no, no. Original Sun Ra. How's that? How's that one? Oh, this is out there shit. Way goners. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the Sun Ra records. I never. Yeah. So, 
New York Eye and Ear. Oh, wow. Oh, Control. Jesus. John Chikai on that one. That's another original Sun Ra. Cool. Is that volume two? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just got this recently um, and upgraded because I had a get back reissue that I was trying to sell, actually. This is for sale. If anybody okay. needs it. Yeah. I see the, there's an Italian. That's the Italian one. I see. Yeah, that's the Italian. That one I have for sale. Yeah. I think I was asking uh, 35 for it. Of course, I have a lot of the freak oh. books, the protest like and stuff, the thugs. Yeah. I like that. Oh, uh, yeah. I've seen that. That's a. It's got an yeah. autograph on it of some type. I don't know whose it is. This one's the uh, Paul Blay Trio original. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you have that, Mike? I do. That's like not, I got mine for like 30 bucks. It's not expensive. It's the Marion Brown. Yeah. It's an original. Yeah. Oh, nice. This one's fantastic. Frank Wright Trio original. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's cool. Frank, yeah, Henry Grimes on bass. Oh, nice. Here's the one that, well, this is the Burton Green record. That one's I've never seen that one. What is that? Is that solo piano? Um, well, he's on piano, piano, harp, percussion, but uh, it's got a, a lot of players. Marion Brown's on alto, Henry Grimes bass, uh, Dave Gant percussion. Very cool. Uh, my camera ain't that bad, good. Let's see. This one was a gift from Dom. Uh, okay. A lot of things. She's kind of out there, vocalist. Um, oh, that's an OG. Yeah, that's, cool. yeah, that's an OG. Um, I was out in at Los Angeles, <clears throat> and uh, we were getting ready to leave Glass House. I was with Sherv and Alex, and um, Alex Rodriguez, the owner, or well, the owner of Record Safari, walked in, and he had a handful of records, and he set them on the counter, and this was on top. And so he literally walked in with the record. Alex said, hey, Dave, look. And I had him put it in my hand, and I paid him, and we walked out. <laughs> <laughs> who is what that? Who is that? One time I met Alex Rodriguez from Record Safari. He put this, he walked in with this record, and I walked out with it within minutes. What? Was the price fair? I feel like he usually prices pretty, pretty. Oh, good. God, yeah. I don't think I pay. I didn't. I know I didn't pay 100 bucks for it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Maybe 80 who is it? Nobody knows. Henry Grimes. Knows. Okay, thank you. I know. It's um, Perry Robinson clarinet and Tom Price drums. So it's just oh, a trio. Cool. Yeah, I, I I talk to Alex all the time. Basically. I talked to Alex today. Oh, yeah. He tried to get me the Spider-Man jazzy record. You tried to make me buy that. He sold well, me this, uh, Dave. He sold me this the other oh, day. That's 7-inch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's freaking gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, I saw you post that. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen that in a shop. Have you played it, Rob? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. There's not none on Discogs. It's the only one, you know. Yeah, that's that's a nice seven. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Sure. More of uh, the thugs. Um, I got a different cover for that too. This is a great psychedelic cover of that record. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. This is one that uh, Matt's Gustafson turned me on to. In that video he did. Um, Charles Tyler Ensemble Original. This one is a pricey one. Um, Henry Grimes again shows yeah. up. Charles Charles Tyler on alto. Damn. Good free jazz. Um, Sonny Simmons. Yeah. yeah, I would love that record. Me too. It's pretty yeah. iconic. Um, I have a Charles Tyler live record I'm selling. The Noah Howard. This one's difficult to find. I, this came from Los Angeles. There's a there's an Asian guy out now. LA, I forget his name, that's had a bunch of ESP disc at the time. That was really good. Of course, the Sonny Murray. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's got Byron Lancaster on it. Sonny Murray's a drummer, right? Uh, Sonny, yes. yes. This one, this one's one of the most recent that I got from Wantlist Records up in uh, the Boston area. Uh, good friends with Kieran Needle Groove. Uh, Dave Belson. Uh, this has the Velvet Underground on it. 
Hey, I, I'm going to take off. I have to do some stuff. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Take See, you See you. Come to the auction tomorrow, one Pacific. Yeah, somebody needs to get the Hal Galper. Yeah, for sure. You know. Yeah, it'll be there. See ya. Marion Brown. I have that one. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah. That one's pretty chill. It's pretty easy. Listen. Carl Berger. Vibes. Their covers are really nice. Heard him either. Yeah, their covers are cool. This is a great one. Sonny Simmons. Damn. With his wife, Barbara Donald. Uh, on trumpet. Yep. She That's puts on one. a few of those. Oh, this one's right? probably the most expensive. Uh, this one mm. belonged to... Uh, Get his last name. Greg. Greg sold his part of his collection on Carolina Soul a couple of years ago. This is the Mars at Watts. Um, it says Buyer Lancaster on it too. Cool. This one, this one gets up there in price. <clears throat> of course, I just got this at the last convention in Charlotte. Sunra. Sunra. Nothing is. So I have the reissue for. There's the label. That's pretty awesome. Pretty I have the reissue for sale. This one's the base record from Italy. I was asking 45 for this one. This is the one I've had. This has been my player copy for a while. So we got the, uh, this one was free from Tom at Bop Shop. He just threw this on my stack. Is that the Gato? The Gato, yeah. It's a free yeah, record. Sure. The cover is no, I got I got mine for free, too. It's a little What's bit that? Record. I got mine for free. I was at Billy's Record Salon, and he threw that in for free. That's right. I remember you talking about that. Yeah, it was really nice of him. It's a great record for a free record. Yeah, it's yeah. great record, dude. We get into some rare ones, the Zitro. This one took years have, so. and years and years to find. This is a weird freaking record, but really good. Drummer, percussionist. Uh, Frank Wright. Yep. That one was tough to find. That one's your prayer. This one's the one of the best jazz records ever made. Um, mm. Again, another top five for me. Local color from the Peter Lemmer Quintet uh, from the UK. Okay. So this one was uh, the owner of ESP Disc sat on this right. recording for a very, very, very long time before releasing it. Um, but that that's highly recommended. Joe from Analog Archive can attest to that one. We have. Uh, Charles Tyler. This one, Dom. Dom got this one not too long ago, too. You're showing all ESP ones, right? Yeah. I don't come across that label much either out in the wild. Steve Lacey. No, they're oh, difficult man. to find. Steve Lacey, The Forest and the Zoo. Alex gave me this one. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is live in Argentina, I want to say. Yeah, I think that's right. Enrico Rava, Louis Maholo drums. This is this is top-notch cool. record. And I think the cover is like Roscoe Mitchell or something drew it. Or oh. something like that. Or maybe maybe it's somebody else, but it's some Bob No, it's not yeah, Bob yeah, Thompson, that's it. yeah. Bob Thompson. That's it. Yeah, that's 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 my favorite Steve Lacey record. Um and of course I showed this one that belonged yeah. to that Duke professor, Noah Howard at Judson Hall. It's cool. a very free outing. Uh, this one's Burton Green Trio. Um, this one, this one's a little bit di more difficult to find. This is a. This still is an original shrink. Um, I got a lot. The gods, more of the folk stuff. Third mm -hmm. Testament. These, these guys, these, these were the guys that actually ran ESP Disc. Cool. They ran. They ran the actual uh, operations. For the what kind of music were they? Uh, it's protest folk. Okay, gotcha. From you Where know during the Vietnam War. I think I've come across that name. This is one of my favorites. Um, the SHQ. Um, Karel Valevny. Um, I think this from the Czech Republic. This is this this is the craziest cover of any on ESPN. Yeah. That's he was in a motorcycle accident or something. <laughs> I forget what the deal was. So they used the picture from the hospital. Um, I could be wrong about that story. Some, it was some weird story. This one I got from Dylan at Noble Records out of that collection he got in Florida. This one's oh, yeah. a bonkers record. Um, I've never seen that. Yeah, T Other Little Tune. 
Um, who is this? This is uh, Alan Sondheim. He's got a couple records, and I'm missing one. Yeah, I read. I read the book. I didn't uh, know there was a book. Let me look. Oh, yeah, hold on. <laughs> A great book it's cheap i'm jason weiss <laughs> highly recommend always, it. On always, in, trouble. always okay. in trouble it's uh cool. basically all the musicians that are still alive at the time of him writing this giving their opinions and uh some people believe the owner helped the musicians and some believed he took advantage of them mm, yeah uh, it's a little bit of both i'd say I, mean, he's, I did hear in his defense, not that I wanted to, but one thing I've heard is that he never signed them to multi uh, album contracts. So if you were to get successful, if you want to break off and sign with another label. So I think that's the way that he helped justify his, his business practices, I guess, where he was just he like, was still, he was still shady as hell. Okay. Yeah. I but, mean, I haven't read the book, but, 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 the, a lot of these musicians would have never got any start at all. That's what he ar would argue. Is that yeah? Yeah, it, it's it was there was definitely give and take. <clears throat> is there you a hardcover I mean? version of that book? Uh, no. I didn't find one. Okay. Hey. What's the name of the book, Mike? People couldn't see it. Uh, Always in trouble. I'll drop a link to the. Uh, looks like there, it's on Amazon for yeah. twenty five bucks. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good read, and it's not very long, so. Um, this one is interesting because this one is a European uh, group, Free Music 1 and 2, um, very, very good stuff, uh, pretty Rikers. Uh, I think, yeah, um, jo Joe has that too, Analog Archive. Uh, this one is one of my favorites, uh, very interesting record, Alan Silva, um, with Carl Berger on Vibes. Dave Burrell's on piano on this. This one's this one's way up there for me. Very very interesting record. That cover photo looks like he, he could have starred in Planet of the Apes. Yeah, yeah that's a cool record. This one's got the worst album cover of any of the ESP disc. It's like <laughs> this big stink bug on top of a freaking car with a horn growing out of it. In, yeah, it's weird. On the moon or something. And this is not very good. Um, either it's it's, <laughs> it's it's odds. It's not a very good record. They do a they do do a Rolling Stones cover of Jumping Jack Flash pretty good on this. <laughs> Talking to death. Revolutionary Ensemble. This is Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. Uh, Vietnam One and Two at the Peace Church. This is a killer record. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. this one's still affordable. To yeah. I got mine for 40 bucks, I think. Yeah. Did you get it from Billy? No, I got that from Elm City Sounds. Oh, nice. In, in Connecticut. This one's tough. To find. Yeah. Frank Lowe. That's, like, that's definitely one I need to get. Yeah, this is excellent. Uh, still going. So, uh, Cole, Strain, Cole Strain is asking, do you have an OG album or something different? Bird notes. Or not Coleman? I don't know. I don't Somebody's know. asking uh, here. I don't know. Oh, oh, I, I think. And then the lastly, last exit, Iron Path, which is Brodsman. He's on ESP disc? Yeah. All oh, right. In this group and on with last yeah. exit. The, the rock cool. stuff. With, so uh, is that with uh Sonny Chirac on that? Yeah, that's some heavy stuff. Yeah. I'd like to get uh maybe Rob just picked it up. But I forget the name of the album, but I'd like to get some of their stuff. Uh so Needle Groove says that revolutionary ensemble is some light listening. Yes, agreed. <laughs> I've got some more records to show. Okay. Are you getting the disc? Uh no. The only so do you not have the Albert Eiler spiritual unity, Dave? No, because I'm being really particular about the one I want. Okay. Do you I want, want the first press it with the with the um with the book. They do a spe special cover on booklet that? and oh. everything. Isn't and it's there rarer than 
freaking rare. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I can get a, I can get a copy for eight hundred dollars. It's missing stuff. That's beat to shit. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna do that. So I'm I'm holding out for a miracle. Screen printed. That's right. Thanks. For a miracle. Yeah, I think I think they screen printed that. Um, the other problem I have is I've gotten into collecting rare is piss seventy eights. And so to be to be quite honest, and this is the this is the comment I left for uh, Ken when he showed the coal train that went for twelve thousand and whatever that I paid fifty bucks for. I forget when. Um, you know, we're those the guys that are looking for the seventy eight. They're looking for bars of gold. We're all looking for rust off of a pinto. Yeah, compared mm -hmm. to those guys. I mean, they're looking for stuff that people are diving into the Wisconsin River trying to unearth metal masters that they've heard are in the bottom of the river. <laughs> um, so it's it's a different ball game. So that's kind of where I'm headed. Um, so what's seven? So you see so your how big is your seventy eight collection? Very small, but I I do have the first ever recorded music that Sun Ra wrote. Oh, okay. okay, from nineteen thirty three. Uh, oh. I was in Goldmine Music Magazine for that. Well, all right, Chris, show some records, and um, Dave, if you want to show those afterwards, that'd be cool to see. Oh uh, no, they're they're locked up. <laughs> okay. How much longer are you? Guys <laughs> Wait, are they not in your house? Uh, they they were, have the One was in a is in a was in a safety deposit box. Holy shit! Okay. For a while that 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 shit belongs in the Smithsonian or in what? Corn, How did you find that? With, or something. Okay. This record does not belong in the Smithsonian. It is good though. It's revolutionary. Oh, yeah. 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 That is a great record. Hills Republic. It's really cool. It's um Nordstrom. So it's it's Leroy Jenkins on violin, uh Cerrone, I guess I'm gonna say his name on bass, and yeah, then yeah. He's on that revolutionary ensemble. Yeah, yeah. And anything with Cerrone on bass is killer. Oh, that is revolutionary in some yeah. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's it's one of those cool. It's the horizons with the weird digipack covers, you know. Oh, okay, cool. I like those. But they're stupid because you have to slide the record like in here, so you have to open it to get the record. Okay. Out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I got that this week. Uh, uh, it's really good. Um, the uh, the trio, you know. Of just violin, bass, and and drums, it's really it sounds really good. It sounds kind of classical at times too. And then there's a couple of tunes where they're like, like just like singing horribly and you know making noise with that and stuff. But it's it's fine. But the rest of it, the rest of it I really enjoyed. Um, this is a groove groove merchant I picked up. It's groove homes. Oh, nice. Groove merchant's a great label. Yeah, I love Groove Merchant. Um, cool label too. Yeah, I don't see their records in Charlotte ever. Groove Merchant. I don't see very. I mean, I've got about probably ten of them that I've found here locally. Like those, Groove those are you. Those are records you find in California. Got the that Tom Carter okay. part. And then what else? Oh, I got the Schneider. This is great. Oh, McB. That's Kieran's yeah. guy. There you go. Yeah. So see some of the uh, Eddie. I don't know the rest of them, the rest of the guys at all, but. They're really, Hubert Eves is a piano player. He's really good. I was looking at some of his other stuff. So, little white label muse promo. And then I got this Woody Shaw. Oh, that's a great record. Yeah, it's Live Fire. with the Guard. Hmm. Columbia, she that's it. Yeah, and I, yeah, this she did. I think six bucks for it. Yeah, Woody, Woody Shaw records are still kind of slept on, I swear. Hey, some of them are. Not all of them. Some of them are. Are you guys going on for a few more minutes? Sorry, you're not sure. Huh? Oh, go ahead, Dave. Are you guys going on for a few more minutes? Your show? Uh, yeah, you, you, we need to get you. You got. I'm sure you got some records to show. Yeah, right? I should. I should. I I procrastinate. I should. I have some new albums I showed. Since I was You've gone, been quiet yeah, on. Since I was gone from the c computer for the past week. Don't don't don't, don't pull a Darren and ask about it for thirty minuts. Just uh, show the records, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm ignoring it. Like no, just kidding. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> I, I found a David yeah. Stone Martin cover. Oh wow! Just, her, just today, Harry. Oh, cool. Yeah, old this school. Is the only album this guy ever oh, did, I guess. That's all right. Oh, that's left a... records. Yeah, I just saw an Os I, uh, Oscar record. I knew, oh, that's cool. 
Beautiful. I've come across any Clef records before, really, the first time. Yeah. You yeah Norman Grand's had that record, that label, yeah. and they, they reissued them on Verve a lot. He's yeah, I have Verve some of those at Verve yeah. second press. Clef series, yeah. yeah. Good find. Yeah, that's cool. That's I fantastic. Think, I, I, I posted this to Instagram, but I don't know if anyone would say that. Charles Rowland a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah, it's a twofer, right? Huh? Yeah, it's there's third, two, it's third two, record. record. There's two albums in there? No, it's one record. Set. One record. Oh, okay. It's, it has the last recordings of a. Uh, says two last recordings of Lee Morgan on here too. Oh wow! Oh, that's cool. It's a seven. It's a seventies prestige label. Oh yeah, know. nice. It's a pretty good album. He's a good organist. Hold on. Yeah, like Lee Morgan only shows up on Prestige maybe once or twice. Yeah. On this dog, oh, yeah, that's a great record. You got a copy of that from 73 mm -hmm. or two. Yep, yeah, that record jams right there. Yeah, oh. it's good. Very yeah. nice. It's a player, it's pretty good. Album. Bam, hold on. This is me. You gotta get faster, with this. You get faster, faster. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh right. Chico, with the art cover. I don't have any of his albums at all till this one. Very nice. The early, the early LA stuff. It's a oh, second. Contemporary or World Pacific. Oh, Pacific, Pacific, yeah. Yeah. I read this was on Pacific Jazz first. Yeah. Same like thing. That. Yeah, it's probably. It's a pretty good copy. There's one or two scratches, unfortunately, but you know I'll hold that's on. A, to well, it. It's you know, old, the, that's a really old record. The outtakes yeah. of that session has uh, Eric Dolphy on them. But oh, for whatever okay. reason, they didn't use the Dolphy tracks. Oh, well, that's that's a cool. mistake. Which is which original stuff. back, this one. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. It's a, it's a, it's an okay album. <laughs> I don't know what oh, I, uh, I haven't seen the, mo the movie. was on Turner Classic Movies once. Uh, Show the back of it. And then now you're, you're going to never be on the stream again since you said that because Felipe Bailey's going to hear this and kill you. Oh, it's even a promo page. copy. Nice. Well, it's it's one of those promos that's not, it's a regular uh, epic, epic label. Yeah, but they probably didn't even make wild label ones. It's old as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I like yeah. I, I like those epic labels. Yeah, yeah, me too. It's an okay album, not my favorite. Huh? They're reissuing that. Uh, it's cool, pretty cool. Find artist for epic. The uh, the Booker Booker Little is he on epic with Max Roach? I'd have to look that up. Leroy Jenkins. Yeah. Think Next reaction. five I got is a VLCT from your, you know, that Steve Park that gets on Rachel's show a lot. I don't know. Show us records. First in the chat gallery on Rachel's show every time. Oh, okay. nice. Wilbert Longmire guitars from the 70s. I don't know. I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah I, I've not seen that. Like, <laughs> Bob James. Uh, oh, cool. Oh, oh interesting. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looks dope. I haven't listened to it yet, but I know I'm procrastinating. Isn't that super funky? Yeah. That's serious right there. Yeah. Okay. It's on Bob James at Tap Captain Z Columbia. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's what hey, if you ever see any Joanne Brackeen records, buy them, Dave. Brackeen. Yeah, I, I wish I lived in a big city. Yeah, with Joe know. Henderson on them. Well, the one of them has Joe Henderson on them. The her trio shit's amazing too. Yeah, this one's yeah, I've, I've got the one with Joe. Eric Gale. What is that? No, oh, Eric Gale. Okay. Oh, wow. 70s album. That's kind of tripping me out, that cover. You found a bunch of stuff. Where, like where are you at, Dave? I know you're Wyoming Day. Are you in Wyoming? Riverton, Wyoming. Really? Boondocks. <laughs> oh, hold on. Let me see what I wrote. I wrote down my favorite record store in each state the other day. Let's see what I had for Wyoming. I can't remember what I wrote. Cheyenne and Casper are both the only two that have not used record stores. <laughs> Let's see. Wyoming. What did I have? What's next, Dave? Oh, I no, oh, that's what's I have jazz violinist, I guess. Oh, well, I haven't listened to it yet, but that's quite the cover. Yeah. Is there a shop called Ernie November? I think yeah, I've ordered. Che that. Cheyenne has one. I've been to that a long time ago. Yeah, I think yeah. I've ordered. I've, I wrote down places I've either ordered from or been to in every state. That Ernie November. That I've been. I was there before we moved. To Wyoming, that they got some good used records back in there for a long, I long time. I think they have a few. I think they have shops in there, more than just Wyoming too. I think they have Ernie, shops in other I states. That, Ernie No Rumor is based out of a Sioux. Uh, 
It's the biggest city in South Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's what it is. They're in. They're out of the Dakotas. There's one in Billings too. I've been to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Three. Three more. I'll hurt. I got this one. That's great. Right. Yeah, that's a good album. See we've seen that. Oh, yeah, we've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. What'd you say, Chris? So we've seen that like 500 times. Yeah. In that way. <laughs> and that Al Jarreau album from 88. Steve got me. Hmm. That's cool. They're really I good. I got a few Al Jarreau albums. He's pretty good. Hey, 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 hey Mike, you seen all those albums? I When I showed some albums on Jazz Bell show, Chris, Mike, and uh, Mazzy and Wax weren't there. I think should I show him? A, did you no. see him? I show him on uh, George Barton's show. I think Mike's seen him though. Yeah, that's fine. Milt Jackson, two Charles Mingus albums. I got. Oh, let's see those Mingus albums. Yeah, let's see those. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think some of you guys seen. Mingus, I'm sorry. But you're gonna show us some more Jackie and Roy records or something. That Mingus seven inch was sweet that Rob showed. Dude, that thing is sweet. Yeah, that is. I know cool. I've looked to find some Jackie and Roy albums. I just never come across them. <laughs> You will. Well, I found this one a few weeks ago. Ooh. A few oh, weeks ago. Right. Yeah, that's nice. clean looking too, man. It plays very good too. It's a mono copies. That's Mercury. Yeah. Mercury record, yeah. That's cool. I, I got these from a retired insurance agent that was selling a bunch of albums at a craft fair. Oh, cool. That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Roulette oh, Basie. Nice. Oh, okay. He's a good band too. Yeah, that's a great cover. Oh, no. Roulette Berlin series. Quincy Jones wrote all those tunes. Nice. Cool. What's he got to get his name on the cover, bro? Hmm? <laughs> Quincy's going to get his name on the cover if he can. Oh, yeah, man. Finally found it. Right. Oh, that's oh, fucking great. Wow. Nice. Oh. This is pretty is good. Is that, uh, is that mono or stereo? Is that mono? Oh, this is the original. Of that's one mil one. I do like. Oh, it's, uh, a, it's a mono copy. Fucking very sweet. Nice. Yeah. Label. Label. Nice. That's original. Plays very mm. good too. Very cool. You should have shown these first. Yeah, you, you three of you guys weren't on the stream when I did come up and show only yeah. Joe, only Joe Marino and Felipe seen them. <laughs> oh, okay. Lionel Hampton. Okay. Right? Oh, that's on audio audio fidelity, yeah. Stereo audio, audio fidelity audio. That Lionel Hampton? Yeah. Yeah. He's playing drums, vibes, and piano. Interesting. Oh wow. I've never seen that one. What does the label look like on that one, Dave? Oh, it's okay, no, sir. It, it's an early stereo. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Early stereo oh, album, 57 or 58, something like that. Yeah, freaking silver label. That's neat. The only I have, I, I don't have them to do a shitload of albums, but the only three I have are Columbia. I finally found a different one by him. <laughs> yeah, he did do a shit ton of records on Columbia, too. Here's like one. On that's a great record. Is that a mono? It's a it's one, a mono. Of, one of my favorites from Mingus. That's fantastic. Really that. yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Love that label too. I never come across a, a particular bullseye label before. Too. That's pretty sweet. I got yeah, that right. in a collection from Teddy. Cool. Maybe Charles. That's a good mm -hmm. one. There's so multiple good. covers of that record. It's like a live mm -hmm. album, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of covers that record. Hold on, I have another. Okay. Maybe. I'll start. Here's a jazz soundtrack. Oh, nice. What is the What is the movie? Mickey Warren, One. Warren Beatty's in it. Huh. This is the same record that he just showed with this one. Right. But it's called Wonderland. Instead of jazz. Oh, it's on United Artists. The same record. Retired. Oh, right. okay. Cool. Yep. Leave it to a record label to try to screw you by selling the same record two different ways. And one Saravine album. Oh, nice. I'll, I'll look her voice. <laughs> what is that? Oh, it's on Roulette oh, as well. Yeah, she had a bunch of records on Roulette. Yeah, she did. It's a nice cover on that. Roulette was a totally gangster run. Company. Oh, yeah. 100%. They had that Bir Birdland, yeah. Birdland series. Well, they, they, they own Birdland. I mean, the mob owned Birdland, and that's where they recorded those records at. That's where the label came from. I never knew that till I got hearing you guys about roulette i guess yeah that's cool i mean you know it's kind of crazy like i'm forgetting the artist or there's a story in a book i've been reading about roulette where this guy i can't remember who it was but he went in there was some artist he went in demanding his money from like the owner of the company he was like a 
full on just fucking mobster. And he just pulls out a gun on. He's like, "How about you get out of here in five seconds, or I'll put a bullet through your freaking eyes." Jeez, get out of here! You know, you're not getting shit. And then that was it. So shady shit with jazz back in the day, man. Once in a while, I find some hard to find albums in this area. So not always, but Mike. Yeah, we've been logging some serious hours the last two days. Yeah. Do you have, some, last do you have sponsors that are that are? You know, am I getting a check in the mail or what? What's the deal? Here? <laughs> no, man, this is all pro bono work. Pro all pro bono work. Yeah, I was. Now, I seriously have been thinking the same thing, Dave. We did like, I I, I put out a video on uh, this two for series that you know it took me time to listen to everything and yeah. you know prepare what I want to say and then and then do the video, which is kind of an int- it's work. I mean, it's kind of a little bit of an intense focus. And then the next day we did like three and a half hours on classical stream now we're three and a half hours here tomorrow we have an interview with somebody it's just oh uh, yeah the interview you guys did with uh that pianist from Very angry yeah that was yeah it was all you fuckers should watch it because nobody watched it i, I did i watched every, every second of that that's yeah, a that great was, interview that was Thanks, one of the DJ. best interviews that was really yeah cool. Really we crazy. were like afterwards when we like because they out. were so good back and forth him and his producer you know they they yeah. there was yeah yeah that was good you got them both on and you know that producer he i mean they both work for fallon late night um mm-hmm. and if you look up he's he is on camera sometimes like jimmy will do like sketches with him mm-hmm. so it's kind of cool but uh yeah they're great jmi is i I just we feel like we, we've we've tried to spotlight JMI, their artist, a few times. Yeah, just surprised that more people, you know, aren't like engaging with that material as much as well, like, Mike, Chris Mike, Mike, and I are like high five. My question is this: How is it that? I mean, was he aware of the Jazz Bums channel, or when you approached True. him, they weren't aware of the Jazz Bums channel? JMI. Uh, yeah. Like any, no, any, so that, that relationship started. I think we did the Anthony Wilson interview, and then he reached uh, Jay Cohn reached out to us to send us uh, some promos for us to check okay. out. Okay, but we've already like we were like I had a few JMIs already. We've spoken about them before, but that was so they actually reached out to us, and then we've just been, you know, uh, the ball with, starts rolling from there. Yeah, exactly. So and we're more than happy to do it. I mean, that's the like like the live streams are fun. Uh, it's a really great way to engage with the collection and music. But when I get to, when we get to talk to like artists, it's so, it's like, that's the most rewarding. Yeah. Thing it's that definitely that an, another level. Yeah. Uh, deal. So it's, it's very nerve wracking at first. It, it is. Well, you, got, you guys have a good <laughs> format going because of how you have Felipe started out and then, yeah. you know, you, you, Chris, you and Mike both have good sets of questions ready. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's it, it, the same question to start off the thing every time. It's easy. All right, see you, CJ. Um, but yeah, I will. I will say, I usually am pretty nervous going into those, those because I don't know how they're like. We never met Ray Angry before. I didn't know like yeah. how he was going to be. I mean, he was totally awesome. Yeah, it but sounded like, like he knew yeah. you guys or whatever. You know, in the way he was able to talk. So to we try to make them people feel comfortable. Yeah, we let them talk more than we talk. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, and him, and it's interesting. He was at Howard, you know, and now with that record store right at Howard, you know, Decibel Music. Mm. Oh, I, I think I put that in the comment. Tell, tell Ray he has, he's got to stop oh, yeah, from the vinyl thing. communities record store. You know? Yeah. So. But that was great. Um, and but yeah, then honestly, after every interview, there's like a sense of relief, but mm-hmm. also like celebration because usually we think like that they're. they're they're amazing. We love those interviews. That's why, yeah. like, when we, like, I always joke around, like, before we post an interview, I'm always like, I usually just say, like, all right, this is it. We're going to blow up now. Like, we're, we're going to get like 100,000 subs from this. Right. And, like, we literally, like, the very angry one got 400 views. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You need and to... We don't understand why. Like, well, just, just bring want... Mazzy on and put him down in a corner somewhere. I know. know. Well, I I, I, I truly Quartet believe that if, if people actually went and just started watching it, you'd be hooked within the first couple of minutes. Just people just don't they don't click through and even give it a chance, which I think is 
the problem. But you know, it's hard to get people to be interested in in, in lesser known new, new, in new jazz too. Like yeah. I, this is all theory, but like I know that like especially when I first started collecting, I was only interested in like the fifties and early sixties stuff. That was like yeah. it for me, and like the idea of like new jazz musicians, I just wasn't that interested in it. Now I feel like that's where my interest is, but I get that a lot of other people, they don't, they're not, there's the, the, the level of interest in kind of the new things aren't as great as like the old classics. So well, we, I mean, we do have guys out there that are, that do have their finger on the pulse of all. The hell yeah. And oh that, God. You know, Mike, you know, it's in tones and, and yes, uh, Teddy, you know, I don't know if you remember Eat Sleep Vinyl, um, but he worked for, he, he ran the vinyl ball, uh, in Salina, Kansas. Just um, and he's a good friend of mine and he, you know, um, so uh what was I gonna say? I lost my train of thought, but anyway. But that's why like like what JMI is doing, it's all new, super creative. Oh, he's into the new stuff. Like new stuff that is like that Ray Angry one album is incredible. So um, good. Like there's so much good stuff, and I just I don't know, it's hard to get people. It, like in the door it seems like with it people just really are focused on like the blue notes and the, those stuff you know which is well, great with, but, with the yeah. new all this stuff all these records we're showing tonight we can't go and see those most of those guys still perform oh yeah, yeah. i mean that you got to be into new because that's you, you go and see them play you that's know what i mean like, i just i went and saw matthew ship down the street from my house literally five minutes from my house perform on piano it freaking blew my mind he played he played a little place called petra's and i got to hang out and talk to matthew ship shoot the shit with him um i mean living living legend you know what i mean you got to go see these guys while they're playing yeah nobody plays there ever it seems What's like that? so nobody nobody comes here it sucks to dallas yeah you would think i mean dallas is a big enough town man like, a lot of people just don't come to the south yeah well that is true. Charlotte gets bypassed by a lot too, but that's mostly the other this other kind but of I music. Mean, Fort in Dallas is a huge freaking area now. I mean, there's like fucking millions of people here, so it's just yeah. hard for it's hard for jazz musicians to tour when they can, like, if they live in New York City and they're good, they can, you know, there's a lot of venues. They big, they can play at you know all the clubs there, and that's what they've done for decades, you know. So. Yeah. But I, I saw Yusef Days, which was fucking cool as shit. Domi and JD Beck came through, and I missed I missed that show. Herbie's coming in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Herbie's been near here. He never plays Charlotte, though. Herbie's played yeah. Greensboro, and he's played Greenville, South Carolina. And he wants a lot of money. Yeah. His shows are not cheap. Oh, yeah. But so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go see him. And then Melissa Aldana, I was talking about this, was I think Felipe and Mike. She's coming to um Plano, which is about an hour from here, but she's just she's going to be her, and then like this faculty band at this college, she's she's doing a like a weekend at like a. I've never heard of her. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. She's or, teaching her for the for, for a couple of days, you know. Yeah, I need to get out and see my guys in Girl, Ghost Trees. Uh, they're a free jazz duo from here in Charlotte. They they've recorded this. I think it's their second or third album with Maureen Sickler at Rudy Van Gelder's. Oh, cool. Um. Yeah, they're they're fantastic. Um, they they just played a show, but it was like I forget when it was, and it was it was thirty bucks, and I'm like, I don't know if I'm paying. How short? How bucks short? To my buddies, you know, like. But. Eleven. How short is short? If there was a curfew at the venue, I mean, I heard. I think I heard about that. Oh, oh heard really? It's short. I don't know. Short. Very pissed. It was pretty pricey for short. Yeah, yeah. Well okay. over three, well over three figures. Oh no, I didn't pay that much. It was, yeah. it was not cheap down here to see Herbie. Well, that's the thing; like nobody comes here, so when they do, it's unexpected. So I mean, I think I paid like sixty bucks for the ticket. Yeah, it was it was double that here. Yeah, yeah. which I mean, a double that's normal now for any concert almost. Uh, which is crazy. the The most I'd ever paid for a show for the longest time was Radiohead, and that was eighty bucks. Radiohead. And they they yeah. played in Rainbows cover to cover, and 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 a bunch of other stuff. I, I think a, I paid like I paid like eight hundred bucks to go see Tool. Me and my wife. Holy Radiohead. shit! 
I've seen Tool the most of any band, I think. I, there was a time where I'd, I had seen every single show that they played in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. Damn, nice. Every single one. I've missed one that I know of so far in Charlotte because I already had tickets to a show the same night at Snug Harbor. And then the newest show that's it just came through, I I wasn't they they were downtown and it was the prices were nuts. It was hundreds of bucks. Yep. So I, it's two now. So but <clears throat> yeah, it's insane. I mean, after the pandemic, concert price ticket prices went to the roof. Yeah, I went I saw them at the, my favorite show was probably the Tabernacle <clears throat> in Atlanta, um, the night that Lateralist was released. Mm. Um and they what they <clears throat> played the new video at the set break when they went off stage they, yeah. they, they, they dropped this big screen and the tabernacle is an old church just keep that in mind hmm. and tools playing in an old church so <clears> they <throat> dropped the screen they <throat> ran the video then they came out and played the song live nice. so i had never seen a band be <laughs> able to pull that off and keep the crowd into it right. where you're going to hear the same song twice in a row it was incredible and then they 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 closed the opiate mm. in a church that was crazy and there mm. were people outside that were this was Protect. Back, Protect. this was back when you they had first put holograms and tickets it was the first okay. time they ever put holograms and tickets and so yeah. people were getting busted for counterfeits yeah, because that. the tickets were only 15 dollars back then mm. And people were paying up to 300 in the parking lot. Yeah. And then we got to the door and they were shining a light on the tickets and some people weren't getting in. Like this couple flew from Boston to go to that show that were standing in line behind us and they had mm. bought their tickets in the parking lot for 300 a piece. They didn't mm. get in. Damn. Damn. They didn't get in. That's a tough one right there. It's a tough ride to they didn't right get there, in. Man. And they, they got walked over to a police car <laughs> and there was a bunch of guys in handcuffs in the back and they said, can you identify are these the guys that sold you the tickets? Because the Get the guys no, no. Got tickets were got arrested Jeez. <laughs> and that was that tool show that was a crazy that was such a good show though um there's but i've seen them when buzz from the melvins came out and played guitar with them in raleigh um hmm. that was incredible um i've seen them a million times I've seen them with helmet um at a little gymnasium in charlotte back way back God was even op I think it was just opiate was out at that yeah. time. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen them everywhere. Winston, um, Greensboro, all over the place. I remember Tool made some weird, weird music videos way back on. Oh yeah, with a something like that. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm gonna show some records real quick. Well, yeah, please do. Uh, so these are my ESPs. Uh, the only one I'm not going to show is I don't have it close to me. Is I have the Henry Grimes, but it's the modern reissue, mm. which I didn't fine. even know it was reissued. Yeah, it's fine. The ESP disc I think is actually doing the reissues. I don't know. Yeah, they. It, yeah, but. he is. He is. He is. He's got a guy. Um, there's a video out there on YouTube of the guy that's doing ESP disc stuff. Thank God we have someone doing it. <laughs> So I do have that, but I won't show it. Um, these are all the older stuff. So I have the Paul Blay Trio Closer. It's all this. This nice. I think I, I got for thirty bucks, as I mentioned. That's a really good price. It's, uh, but the one I want is the one you showed with the red cover. Oh um, yeah, you can. Get I think the I like that one too. better. I think I like that one better. But this one's cool. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, um, this is the Garage. This is the one you're looking for? Yeah, that's the one. And my buddy. We were out digging together, and he found it. I was oh. really jealous of him. Oh, <laughs> he found it before me. I think he paid a really good price for it because that's like an eighty hundred dollar record now. Yeah, it didn't. It wasn't cheap for me. Yeah, so um, this I'm one sure. is still more affordable. I'm pretty sure. I think I probably paid closer to what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, so that's the first one. It's a trio record. Yeah, you got a good that's deal on that. I think this is the most recent one I picked up. You showed this. This is the Ornette Coleman. Town yeah, that's Hall. the original yeah. cover. Original cover. I got it. And this is it's on this label. I want to do, I want to take like pictures of all the ESP. Just, this is what you, since you have a big collection, if you ever had time, 
to just take pictures of the labels and just make a collage. That would be awesome. Yeah. Oh, the labels are interesting, um, especially the Sun Ra. The Sun Ra's have a lot of variants to their labels. Yeah, um, but this one's cool. Uh, I got this one. This one I think I got for a really good price too. I can't remember what it was. One of the best on the it's label, today. man. But yeah, this I one, absolutely love that record. It up, it's really nice condition. I mean, it's as clean as you can. You can. Yeah, and that yeah. you have an original there, right? Yeah, that's the purple. See, I, I have a reissue. Mine's, so, mine's a base base reissue from Italy. I'd love to have an original. Is Johnny Diani on this? Uh, I don't. Yeah, yeah, he is. So Johnny Diani plays bass on this. Oh, that's really? yeah, that's right. And yeah, he did a lot of great stuff with Dollar Brand. Oh yeah. Yeah, and Bob Thompson died in '66. Yeah, and I think that that's why they. Free. I think that's why they gave him the cover to like memorialize him. Mm -hmm. And the forest and the zoo were something to do with the. Uh, where was this recorded again? Where did you say? I it was? think Argentina, and I think they were yeah. stuck there. Yeah, yeah. There's a story. Yeah, they were basically going there to be like evangelists for free jazz, and then I think there was like. There was a class or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I got this. This is kind of a weird one. So this is the Marion Brown. I say it's weird because the cover, the front cover is actually the back. If you look at where the spine is, oh, yeah, is that how yours mine. is? <clears throat> exact. Mine's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. So I got this. I forget how much I paid for it, but I got this for actually. Yeah, I got this for forty-five bucks. Maybe oh, you're just supposed seal. to flip it around, there's, man. There's a uh, sealed, a dead mint sealed copy. On the wall at Hardy Boys Records in Charlotte right now. I think he wants 80. 80? That's really good. Yeah. That has 75 uh, or 80. I think it was 80. That yeah. label. But this one's good. I mean, this is <clears throat> not, not crazy. Well, I'm 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 very happy to see you are into the free jazz, Mike. Yeah, we could definitely get more into it. Uh, I mean, on future streams. <laughs> oh yeah, I got plenty here. Like you collect black yes, jazz. This stuff is just the tip of the iceberg. Do you collect black jazz? Uh, yeah, I have I have plenty of black jazz originals. So maybe at some I point have, I even have black jazz original seven inches. Oh, oh cool. nice! That's awesome. Oh yeah. So I I'd love to. I mean, I think it's too late now. I'd want to have you know. Black jazz I, to me is 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 different though than the free jazz stuff that I. Have I feel like it's stuff. like more and. Well, I don't know. Like a lot of the AACM folks were put out by black jazz. I mean, I guess the the style that I've heard is loft. It's loft jazz. Which basically was recorded in lofts in New York City. Yeah, the loft like, jazz stuff is, is if you if you want to get the loft jazz stuff, just get this. Series. I have I have all of those. Yeah, these these are that's what I want to do. I want to do a video on those. Oh, here. we'll get it cranked out, man. Every and most of them. I have I just wildflowers. Oh. Yeah, I didn't want to. Got Dave Burrell, Abdullah. Since you showed it, yeah, I just I just completed my wildflower set. Oh, beautiful. That's the only one I've been able to find. It's three. They're not expensive. Um, do yours all have saw, giant saw cuts? Yeah, my, all, mine all have saw cuts. All of them. Yeah, they all were promos for some reason. They sound good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, they're some of my favorite. I mean, it's also something I'm into right now. So I always have that bias. But these are incredibly good. Um, yes. Incredibly good. Uh, yeah, it's like, I like time. right it now. Like, I like it these. encapsulates this moment in time in New York, you know. Yeah, and I feel like I just think this style of music I feel like is represented on like the Black Saint label and Soul mm -hmm. Note, but I feel like these are better. Like the I think that it just I don't know how it just represents whatever that style well, is so well. There's a, there's a fantastic mix. It's it's so many styles. Yeah. You know, and it's all live. Everybody's clapping and cheering. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, I have. So this, it, for for it's people funny, who don't know, it reminds me of okay, the loft jazz thing, and it's live, and you're there. I, it, it reminds, reminds me of that. I have a I have a Charlie Parker record where he's playing in his apartment, and you can hear the streets of New York through his window. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where his apartment was. <clears throat> yeah, so that but yeah, that. Just, those wildflower, it's it's like a seven day session or something, and it was all recorded in Sam Rivers Loft in New York, and it, it just seemed like kind of an amazing event. And they recorded it all and they put it out, so it's like tons and tons of musicians. 
Nicole. I bought the Wi-Fi. Nicole. 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 Braggy Nicole. <laughs> She's got one hell of a collection. I bet. Hell yeah. That um, she is she is got just a couple more. I have, I have this gato. This is the one that Billy gave me. And if That's I remember correctly, happy. Mine's all right. I was gonna say, if I remember correctly, this is about as as you can possibly get. Like, yeah, I've never, like I've never perfect. seen one look that good. It's like perfect. You know, beat the shit. And it's it's a first pressing or early. Yeah, I don't, yes. Sometimes they were like repressed a couple times early on, but yeah. See, now thing. mine was free because it needed to be free. <laughs> that was a nice gift. Yeah, this one. Yeah, he, that was very nice of him. And then just a couple more, three more, I think. This one, I forget what press it is, but this is the Albert Eiler. Mm. This is the a great one. My side. Yeah, you got to get it. You got to get it. Don't don't hold out on a first pressing. Just grab it. And then if you get a first pressing, you can sell your other one. Uh, sometimes yeah. I am a stubborn sob. No, that's fine. If that's you know, everybody collects how they want to collect. What does Al, What did, what instrument does Albert play? He Same. plays on this. It's is it tenor? No, it's probably probably alto. It just says saxophone. Oh, cool. I think it's yeah. I don't think it's a tenor sax on here. And I think it's alto. Yeah, Sonny Murray and Gary Peacock. Gotcha. Cool. Cool, Mike. But it's a it's a good one. I mean, this is like one of those like landmark recordings. And this is, I think, the second. Yes, yeah, the second ESP title. So they did that Esperanto one as the right. first title that you showed, which is cool that you have that. Um, and then yeah, that's not an easy record to find. Yeah, I've never been yeah. with that. Yeah, um, I, I found I, I went looking for that record because of the video that I mentioned earlier with Matt's Gustafson and Thurston Moore. Um, they got me into collecting ESP disc. Yeah, because of that video. Um, and then I have the Pharaoh. I think this is the same copy you had. Because the yeah. very first copy doesn't have the title on it here. Correct. There, right. There's multiple covers of that record. And, um, and, and, yeah, and then the later ones have a totally different cover. Yeah. Well, I might even have a different label than you. Yeah. So you have a yellow does. label, right? I think they, they named it like Pharaoh's First Session or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Um, there's, I don't even, I don't think my, is mine yellow? Hold on. I can't remember. Let's see. Now, see, yours is yellow and mine is. Yes. White, okay, Black. yeah. So, yeah, within the you can make a whole book on ESP disc like labels. Yeah, we just looked it up earlier. Well, no, that's the history of the. I mean, the actual label, the physical. Oh, I see. Yes. So I don't know where yellow. I don't know where yellow fits in the in the, in the list. You know what I mean? White. And then the last one I'll show you, which has the best label. This is has the best label in my collection. This is that revolutionary ensemble. Yeah, and the copy I have has the coolest label ever. It's just Weird square, square lock. Right, cool. It goes into the dead wax kind of. Yeah, but it's so it's such a cool looking label. Yeah, the block who's is also, a good. One. Yeah. So who are the three guys on that? The trio so there's or? there's Simone. Is that the guy's name? Yeah, he plays bass. There's Leroy Jenkins on violin. Yeah, and then who's the Who's the drummer? Or who? And it's not. Is it a drummer? There is no. Or it's Jerome Cooper. Uh, yeah, Jerome okay. Cooper. Yeah. On percussion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's and if guy. you don't have the if you don't have the Jerome Cooper like solo records, get them. Jerome Cooper. Yeah, they're not on ESP disc though. His record. They're on. Um, oh, Dusty Groove had a bunch of dead stock of them. I forget. What label it is? I, mm -hmm. I got them though. Yeah. And what else? I think that's it, man. I've been like, I'm exhausted from this damn. Yeah. Oh yeah, we got put through the ringer last night. Yeah. Mark and Michael and Michael and Mike. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of mics. I want Greg to. Uh, I I feel like I need to make sure that. Um, I pull Greg in more because I think, oh. I think with like Mazzy, Mark, Michael, myself, like we just completely like just jump in all the time. He's and a very like, patient man. So I think, I think next time I want to do something, maybe we open it up and he can kind of give us his background on some things. We do like some, a profile on him because I'm 
I'm just curious to hear about it. So, um, yeah. His collection is incredible. Yeah, and his artwork is incredible too. Yeah, he's you got should, a, you should, uh, a region. You should see if you can inter interview Beethoven. That'd be sweet. That's a good good idea, Chris. You like that? <laughs> yeah. That'd be, that'd be a big one, man. That'd be a big one. <laughs> Ludwig von. Um, so, all right, should we wrap this up? Yes, yeah. please. Oh, and Wyoming Dave, thanks for showing that clef record. I love seeing the old labels. Yeah. yeah cool. I, My favorite I, I, thing about jazz. I, I also have one, I have one Norgrand record by Anito Day. That's another hard to find label. Yeah. Yeah. Nor Norgrand, Clef, yeah. Early Mer Mercury, Mercury, Verve. It's all like the same, same yeah. label. Norman Grands. Yeah. Mm. But I never found that down home, down home label. They did. <laughs> What's that? Norgrand label. I'll just bring it real quick. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> Who's that? I have, one of those. I have one of those. Bud Powell. Oh, oh nice. Bud Powell. yeah. I've heard of him. Yeah. Damn. Cool. I've heard of him. He better. <laughs> recognize, bro. But that's, right, that's cool. a great record. Unfortunately, that's the only problem. I found that in repo for pennies. They, 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 they just move stuff in there, man. There's yeah. a lot of jazz artists I've never heard. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Y'all have a good weekend. All right. Peace, guys. All right. See hey, you, nice everybody. to meet you, David. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Take and care, Mike. brother.